Welcome to MD Globe of Muscle Radio here at the Pump Media Studios. With me, your host, Charles Thomas. Joined by my co host, AJ, all the way from Norway. Episode 29. 29? No way. And do we have some guys for you tonight? Drop the mic. We have the Black Panther. Yes. What's his real name again? Because you always call him the Black Panther. We've, uh, do you know what? Danakova. Danakova. Yeah, da, Danakove. Danakove. D- Danakove. Very cool name, though. Very cool. Very name. cool guy. Very yeah, cool guy. Yeah, yeah. Classic physique star. Yep, very young as well. Cha- got Mr. Olympia on his first <sighs> try as a, body, as a pro. Isn't that impressive, though? That's very impressive. Imagine he's done one show as a pro. Yeah. Going straight to the Olympia. So that was the turn pro at the Ben Weeder, which was, when was that? Last, end of last year. That was it? in late April. Oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is a really recent. Um, yeah, that was this year. He did what Wesley Vissers did last year. He Wesley turned Vissers pro in March, right. went and won Chicago. Then he didn't do so well at the Olympia. But Black Panther has done something very similar. He's turned pro, and that was a very... Very good show, wasn't it? He beat uh, very good Lee Banks. No, no, I'm all about when he turned pro at the amateur. Oh, that was a very good show. That was the one that George White was raving about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Raving yeah, that about. That was a really good show. I mean, Arnold Vosloo got third. And when you saw the picture, you thought, he, he, he looks like he could win a pro show. And then he didn't. You all right? What's I just wanted Chris to put up Arnold Vosloo on Instagram, please. Yeah. It's my guy. Yeah. Did we, give, yep. did we have a shout-out for this episode uh-huh. yet? No. We, no, got planned, no. we got planned that later, by the way. Okay. Yeah, we'll do it later. We can Arnold Voslo. We just Arnold Voslo. One more yeah. time. Ricky Martin. <laughs> of South upside, Africa. Upside, upside, do, living la vida loca. Oh, that's go down. Let's see one of his pictures again. I get happy each time I see Arnold Voslo. Go down. 106,000. Go to the left there. Let's see the... Oh, look at the beach picture down there. Mm. Oh, look at Arnold Voslo. He looks... Why is he not a pro yet, man? I'm not feeling the pout. I like the pout. You like the pout. Okay. Go there to the left, yeah. up to the beach picture there. Yeah, very good. Ah, that's Arnold Vosloo. His waist looks photoshopped there. It just looks good all year, 20, 365 days a year, bro. It does look good, actually. Oh, fantastic. That's that's a perfect male model uh, physique look. Yeah. Do you think, okay, then, who do you think's got a better physique, him or uh, Callum Von Moga? Him. I do, I, I think so. Yeah. Look at the car, look at the shoulder to waist. Thing is, it's not just the shoulder to waist. I, 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 like, the, I like the quad sweep. Yeah, the I quad like the, sweep. And yeah. Not feeling the power. I like the power. Got to be honest. But he, yeah, he's fantastic. So, really, yeah. Uh, yeah, so he got third yeah, so to the Black Panther. You know, the Black Panther is really good. I'll be honest, AJ. I've seen classic pro shows with not as good top threes. So some of these classic shows, some... Yeah, but this was this. I'm talking about two years ago. The class has only been going around really what four years now. Mm. So it takes time for those pros to come through. Callum Wamoga's looking good again now, by the way. Yeah, he's looking big again. Yeah, yeah, good, good for him. I'm yeah, glad he yeah. came back. Yeah, because he tore his bicep. He and tore everything. Bro. <laughs> yeah, he just tore his fell off the or... bike, fell off the motorcycle, fell down the river, fell over the river. I would say stop doing dumb shit. But at the same time. That's Why him. Sh- that- yeah, if you want to do crazy shit and do... Um, do it, bro. What's Keep that, what's that program shit. when they do the crazy stuff, uh, oh. Chris? You know when they do the stuff and they film it all and they, they made a film? Jackass idiots. Jackass. I yeah. hate them. Yeah, I don't like What clowns. That. I know, setting fire to their testicles. Oh, and, what yeah, yeah, yeah. animals. I know. I don't like all that sort of stuff. Mm. Yeah. Sorry to say, but that's... Uh, as a man of color, we don't do things like that. Oh. That's more like a white thing. Okay. As, yeah, a, yeah. as a man of Wales. Yeah. That's something I wouldn't do either. <laughs> From Wales. Turn your balls on fire and watch and play it on TV and like, hey, look at me. I'm putting wow. my balls on fire, bro. Uh, great balls of fire. Great balls of fire. <laughs> We're going to have a bit of a sing song today. Uh, no, 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 not today. Not today. Uh-huh. So, and then we have a very inspirational guy today. Yeah. I hope people, a very inspirational guy, is in a wheelchair. Yes, Harold Kelly. King Kong Kelly. King Kong Kelly. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's the Ronnie Coleman of wheelchair, isn't it? That's the best way to describe Harold Kelly. Really motivational guy. Really motivational guy. Yeah, I, yeah. I hope you enjoy his story because we enjoyed it. I forget. Was it 14 or 17 pro shows he's won? Basically, he's been third in one pro show, but he's pretty much won every other pro show. He's won every other pro Is show. Is your boss? Uh... I, got a, I got a bit of a pain in my... <laughs> No, I pinched them. Don't I, say, don't say that. Think about the kids watching. Okay. Uh, and then we have a third guest. Uh, what a what um oh Jordan Peele. What an interview that was. Yeah. It's yeah, such yeah, a beautiful yeah. accent, by the way. 
Jordan Pitts. I can't believe you said he sounded posher than me. Yes. Don't you think so, Chris? Very. No. no. Yes, he really does. He Being really posh does. is my thing. Yeah, but he's super posh. But he don't, he don't look it, though. Yeah. So it kind of... He's. He, uh, what was it like when you first met him in the flesh? How In Romania? We, yeah, we were... Oh, he was in Romania. Yeah, he, oh, yeah Jordan's yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Where, there's mu- where there is muscle, there you will find Jordan. <laughs> yeah, he's just taking up a lot of room, oh, isn't he? Oh, just fantastic. The neck. The traps. Who, who do you think he most Thick. reminds you of in the pros? He's like a short. Let uh, me think. Let me think. Who does he? Hmm. Short Marcus Roll. He's five foot six, so he's not that short. He's very short. But uh, do you think he could do the two o two twelve? No. <laughs> do three twelve. Two fifty, bro. He was over three hundred. He's two fifty at yeah, five six. He was over three. He's been over three hundred pounds of that body weight. <sighs> And then he said, uh, he says, yeah, he said, I found out like 310 pounds or whatever, five foot six. He said, I couldn't really do anything. It's like, what? So guys, that interview, Huge. watch it. Yeah. If you're a younger guy and yeah. you're, you're planning to take it to the next level, take notes. Yes. You see, the thing with Jordan is he's, he's like, oh, he's a monster. I'd love to get to know more about him. But he's also, he teaches other people how to get big and yeah. how to train and how to eat and how to kind of uh, look after your health and stuff like that but he's um he's a re- he's an educator he's, a, he's, he's, he's but in this interview sorry in this interview i wanted to cover because i thought well we've got him there for now i wanted to cover it's like when you get sometimes you get uh, um, athletes or whatever you try to cover as much as you can in that time mm. and i feel like we tried to get as cram as much as we could because he's the sort of person you could have him on because he's constantly doing video content he's been you could talk to him for six hours and you still wouldn't scratch the surface and he's very good he's very um like you've got a website trained by jp it's five pounds subscribe, subscribe to that guy see if you want to learn from the best aj he's got five thousand subscribers we're getting five thousand and one yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. something you want to subscribe to. It's proper advice and con- good content, good quality video content as well. What was your first steroid stat like at age 18? It was younger than 18. How old were you? Uh, well, <laughs> speaking of, because we went a little bit in, we not talked so much about performing hands and drugs. Me to say, me to say. But uh, let's get a little bit there. Uh, I'll be, I'll, uh, I've never actually said this. Oh, uh, breaking news. I was 16. You were 16. And I bought 100 fake D ball. Fake, it was fake. They were crap, they were Russian, they were nothing. And okay. I remember taking one and, and thinking, I'm going to wake up in the morning, I'm uh, going to be massive. Woke up next morning, nothing happened. Oh, shit. Next morning, nothing. They were fake. Um, yeah, so yeah, I can you I I don't really count that. No, no, forget about that. I was 17. <laughs> <laughs> and uh dad, if you're watching, please just scroll past the f- next five, ten minutes. Um I got some can I do you want to talk about it? Yeah. Yeah, okay, fuck it. Um I got some decker and sust. Oh ten yeah. decker, ten sust. Yeah. And because obviously I was living at home with my, with my growing up in the old 13th century in yeah. Wales. I can imagine how many kids now doing exactly the same. Did and I, happen, yeah? I'd watch Gladiators on a Saturday night. Michael Hearn and Boyce? No, not the American one, the British one. Oh, that's not as good, but okay. It was very good. Not as good as that. Oh, who, were, you, who were on it? Who, who, was your, on it? who was your favorite Gladiator? Jet. Oh, come on. Diane, uh, Diane uh, Udale. Wolf, Wolf. Can you put a picture of this guy? AJ, 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 we need to talk about Diane Udale. Yeah, but can I get a picture of it? Because I don't know who it is while you're talking about it. So Diane Udale is... I think she's still quite hot. Okay, let's see. Why. Just keep on talking. You can post okay. them while you talk. Diane Uday, Y O U D A L E. I'll give you a phone number if you want. Oh, you still <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Call me, baby. No, uh, yeah, oh, hey, yeah, hey Rosie is at home watching. I'm joking. Okay, joking. Okay, okay, I've okay, never okay. met her for a few years. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I was stalking her when I was 17 because uh, I was all. Okay, so this is her. I was. Oh. This, this is the British version. This, or? this was like uh, like this was like my teenage crush. Diane I think every guy, every, Udale. every guy. Chris, I just saw Chris mouth the words. Yeah. Yeah, it looked very beautiful. She was good. Come Exotic. on, show some pictures, Chris. Come on. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, she was gorgeous. Oh, oh God. Sorry. I've well, got to be more professional about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I, I'm, I'm just. I've got to be more professional. AJ, about AJ, this. I'm just, you're just sending me back like you did when uh, yeah, the yeah, Michael, yeah, yeah, like yeah. if you started playing Michael Bolton. Are these the guys? That's Jamie the Giant. It's not Jamie the Giant. It looks Stop. like Jamie the Giant. That was Hunter. It's Jamie the Giant. That was, uh, he does not look like that now. He looks very different. I don't know, but yeah. Jamie, it looks like Jamie the Giant. Yeah, he's lost all his hair. And that's now. Lightning on the right. And uh, yeah, Lightning. Yeah, she was quite. She was all right. She was all right. Yeah. And that was the, the, your girl's your jet. Oh God! And I'd I'd watch these guys on a Saturday night in my bedroom. But, yeah. I would get my, <laughs> I'd get my girlfriend over, 
and uh, we'd turn the volume up on Gladiator. The girl that bought you porno magazines, by the way? That was the one. Oh, my God. And then we'd uh, turn the volume up on the TV for five minutes. <laughs> and then I, what I used to do, I used to have an exercise bike, and I'd wedge it up against the door. Did you wait until uh, he shouted, three, yeah. two, one. Gladiators, ready. Oh, oh I'm ready. Oh, I'm done. Giles, ready. <laughs> yeah, He's but a any- Scottish guy, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, uh, he was an Olympic... Um, Oh, what was his name? I forget his name now. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, and then um, and then what I used to do, I used to, have it, I, I used to have it hidden down a wardrobe in a toilet bag. Okay. And then, yeah. yeah. What and, was and it I, It was Decker and Sust. How much was it? Uh, I think I was doing one shot of each a week. And then... Um, so it wasn't that much. <laughs> this is terrible. Uh, Dad, if you're watching, uh, sorry. Um, and then I had, do you remember those Gainers Fuel Twin Lab? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Protein bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not that old as you guys, so I don't remember. Well, they used, to, they used to be these big, chunky, 100-gram protein bars. They were like, they're like a brick. Mm. Really dense, full of carbs. They were great. And then it, they used to come in a box. Mm. In a wrapper, song a bit. Sorry. And because um, and they were that long, I used to, when I'd done with my, I'd done my job, I used to put the needle in there. And oh. I put it in my waistband, in my back, in my oh, box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One day I came home from school. <laughs> school. <laughs> and dad says, uh, Giles, can I, can, I, can I word with you, son? I've got something I want to talk to you about. I was like, oh, oh shit. no, he found my porno magazines. <laughs> yeah, he found my pornos, yeah. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so I sat, I sat down and he says, uh, Giles, uh, just uh, yeah. my stepmom, Sheila, she said she's cleaned your room and she's, uh, she found this in your, in, your, in your bedroom. Do you want to explain this? And he pulled it and he pulled it. And I was like, oh no. oh, no. And there was the broken amp as well. <laughs> so it was a, yeah. So and I just and I just went completely deadpan and I went they're not mine. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> and he went oh he says I've been to the chemist he says one's an adrenaline, and the other one's an anabolic steroid. Mm. I was like, what is this? What is this? <laughs> what is this, Dad? What is this? Well, I says oh Dad, I know whose it is. I said it's my training partner Alex Waller. Yeah, you blamed it on him. Yeah yeah yeah. I said I said Do you know what Dad? I said you've seen him. He's like he he's. He, he kind of like I would say the word fanboy. Obviously, yeah. he worships me. Yeah. You know, he, I said, Dad, he wants to be me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're talking like total bullshit on the fly here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, and Dad, Dad went, "Are you telling me the truth, son?" I went, Dad, I would not lie to you about something like this. <laughs> I swear, I swear, I swear, Dad. Did he believe you? Uh, well, he well, well, he didn't. Yeah, give and he, I think he kind of went, "Okay." I'll give us the shit he thought. Yeah. yeah, but then, <laughs> and then we when well, we moved out of the pub, we like because he sold it, and we moved to this house, and he found it, he found him again. You found it again a few months later, yeah, and I blamed Alex again. Then it didn't work. No, he did. He bl- well, I think he wow. believed me, but he what could he do? I, I was eighteen really. by then. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so you what one de- deca one two one fifty? Yeah, it was one sus. Yeah, yeah. I think my do you want to hear about my best stack when I really? What was your best stack? I was eighteen or nineteen, and it was sippy Nate and Debo. And I remember because I pretty much doubled my poundages. Look how happy Giles is. Oh. People at home, look how happy Saturday morning Giles speaks about his first AJ, stack. do you know what it's like to go from two plates squatting to four plates in, in like six, eight weeks? Doing dumbbell press with 55 kilo dumbbells, 120s, like oh. repping away and you're like a teenager. You felt like a man. Yeah. Well, yeah, but that was, I was young, foolish. The thing is, all my friends were like taking drugs and drinking and smoking, and I was like, "Ugh, I'm not interested in any of that." Yeah. I just want to go to the gym. I used to have to go get an, get the um, the bus to the gym every Saturday morning. It was like an hour each way just to train legs. Come back, we'd pass out on the, we'd stick our heads in in the sink full of water, and oh, that were the days. Nosebleeds, breaking blood vessels in her eyes, uh, falling over, puking. I was a little bit old. I was I was 21. Oh. And at least I would have dated a girl just because she was a nurse. <laughs> so she can inject me. <laughs> <laughs> no way. What were you taking? Decker. Decker. Uh, only... Did you ever get Decker? Dura, what? Decker. Uh, no, I was so young. I didn't know what I was doing. I just used 250. If you use Decker by itself, you can get burp. I used 250. That's why you take it with sus to make it go burp. Uh, it was 250 for eight weeks. Yeah. I think I went up 20. Eight nine kilos. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But on someone your height, that's not that's not bad actually. That's not bad. It's a good, yeah, yeah, that's not bad. That's but not I bad. wasn't really into it as I wasn't in that environment as you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was more uh, yeah. Yeah, in the streets. So. Was, oh right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, we're getting really dark and yeah. naughty in this one. Ooh. We're getting naughty. No, People no. think we're so squeaky clean, AJ. <laughs> I didn't know we're crazy, bro. Mental. Yeah. Anyway, back to Hull, Kelly. 
And I'll, so Jordan Peters, take a yeah. look at this, look at it, and uh, he's going to give you some good advice in that one. Yeah, he's someone who's done so well. Like I said in the interview, I, I remember photographing him and reporting on him for the UKBF British Finals 2009. He took third in the British Finals as a junior. Mm. And then I kind of saw him, and then I, I videoed him for MD, and MD never used the video. Mm. And he was training with Dr. Josh Hill, and it was like, proper they were doing like inclined hammer like with six plates and they had the big chains on mm. so the more it goes up the more tension because it lifts the chain off the floor mm. so yeah and they never and they were doing bench pressing off a block like powerlifters do yeah, you know yeah, with yeah. a block on the chest yeah proper like oh cool they were so strong very intense very like really kind of like dorian yates style you know really grungy and nasty heavy fucking training it was what's awesome. the fakest natural bodybuilder you could you can remember. Are you talking about in the UK or? Just wherever. All of them. No, no. <laughs> I'm trying to check him. No, no when joke. they go on on about being natural, you know there's some proper bullshit. Well, I've, I mean, I've told you the story before when the guy said he was a natural and he came over to the Federation. I said, oh, you're, you're obviously not taking gear anymore. He goes, no, I'm, I'm still natural, but I'm using this, this, and this, and this. Do just, you, he said just the eight Do you weeks. think Mike Ashley was drug-free? Uh... Take a show people at home was for one, the kids at home, Mike Ashley. Well, he he won the Arnold Classic in 1990. He beat Sean Ray. Right, and I think um, uh, oh. Mike Ashley. Can we just leave Jet up, please? <laughs> Mike Ashley, uh, Arnold Classic, maybe you can write yeah, that. Yeah. And that was when uh, Sean Ray failed the drug test and he had $60,000 taken back off him. Yeah. And then they gave it to the second place, Mike Ashley. Mike Ashley, remember the abs? <sighs> wow. So Mike Ashley in clothes, he, he didn't want okay. that Okay, press a picture. Look at that. Okay, so do you believe it was natural? Uh, I I don't think there was very high doses involved. I'm asking if you believe this was natural. Well, if it's a matter of something or nothing, I I think he took something. Yeah, he took something. Yeah, I would, maybe a bit of there was something going on, a bit of anavar. That's Sean Ray, by the way. A bit That's of primo or something. Yeah, they look very similar looks. Very similar looks. To be honest, I don't know. Mm, what thing is, I don't know. Yeah, but some of these guys, when you see them in real life, they're he's like, not a big guy. He's small. You saw him in clothes. Like if you saw him, they, they're very, very. They're he's, not massive. But not at all. They've got the development. They've got the muscle bellies. Yeah. So he's not a big guy. He's very small. He was very short and yeah. very didn't weigh much. He was very good though. Very. Oh, good. he was fan. But, yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. And a great poser as well. Oh. Uh, also, oh my God, the response to Vince Taylor. I know it's going back a few episodes. But that's the guy that if we get him on again and again and again, that the, the response to uh, Vince Taylor has been overwhelming. Oh. Do you enjoy him? Uh, Vince Taylor is such a good man. The yeah. vibe, yeah. the energy, the, 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 the knowledge, the charisma. It's just, it's just what, the perfect guy. What do you think the yeah, modern day kids could learn from someone like Vince Everything. Taylor? What? Bodybuilding? <laughs> life? Uh, life. Life, keep going, energy, be positive. Do you think, uh, I think he's a good proponent for health. Oh, 63 years oh, old. I'd love to look that good at, I was going to say 43. But look, at, 40. look at, look at but that. I am, I am 43. Look at that picture yeah. you just showed up. But all the way up. That's 95. That's the 95 Olympia you're just clicking on there. That's 1995 Olympia. That was the biggest I ever saw him. That was when he, he went up. Uh, look at that small waist. Yeah. Oh. Can, I, can I say something about something you told me when I was 19? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said that was a year I used GH. Yeah. What? At 19? No, I was 19 in 1995, mm -hmm. and he told me that was the first year I'd used GH. Okay. 1995. That, but he was very big that year. Yeah, beautiful physique. Tiny joints. Where are you going? Where's he going? Where are you going, Chris? Chris, what's going on? Yeah, look at that. The 1991, that bottom one there, that's the 1991 Olympia. Do you know how I can tell? I can tell from the lighting, and I know. Do you know what? You could test me on any of these. Go on. What? From where it's from? Test me the year. That's the 1991 Olympia, Orlando, Florida. Okay. took third right, place. Don't, don't look. But how do we know? Because we don't know. It doesn't say on it. Well, yeah, well so I you bet, can say whatever you want now. I bet the viewers can... Um, that's when he won the Arnold Classic in 92. No, that was... Oh, that, yeah. was, that was... No, that's when he did the Australian. I recognise the lighting. Australian pro, that is. That's 2005 or 2006. That's 1995, next to Kevin of Rome. He was second. Kevin was second that year. But then Vince beat Kevin at the British Grand Prix. Oh, look at that one. The most muscular yeah, there. Yeah, it, up, up. Uh, Will Lee Ronnie. Okay, okay. Oh, wait, Chris. There, yeah. Where you Press that one. I'm saying that was 1995. Oh, he's smoking Lee Ronnie there, isn't he? Well, he did at the British Grand Prix. Yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. Vince was fifth. L uh, Lavrone was second in that one. In this show? Yeah. Lavrone was second to Dorian. 
kept Vince was fifth. But they, so, so if he turned around, maybe they no, only no, had no. him there. Listen, listen. At the British Grand Prix, then he reversed it, and Vince beat Kevin. But that picture there that we just saw. Yeah, but it's just one picture, mate. I know. He's so not even me, hitting the post so properly. But look at the. F- He's not. Look at the width. Look at the thickness. Yeah, yeah. Go, some looking at the pictures. Oh, that's Mario. That Moore. was. That was that was the Olympia. That was the one when he did the Olympia in two thousand and when he got eleventh. Remember two thousand six. That was two thousand six. So what can we do to create some so more I'm hype? Showing, I'm just showing off hype for the classic division. Oh, the classic. There was a lot of hype. I two, feel three. like it's dro- dropped off a little bit. You yeah. are absolutely correct. But I think there's more numbers coming into it. But the there doesn't seem to be. Nope. I yep. I I feel like. <laughs> can I put this? You know where you've got the the Olympia guys and the top six Olympia guys, and they are legit superstars. Henry Pirano, Brian Bumstead, uh, George the Bull Peterson. Yeah. Some people have Keon in there. We, I think you got to prove a little bit more than that. He's not proved it to me yet. <laughs> Terence Ruffin. Uh, New York Pro Ke- Keon was fantastic, mate. Yeah, but it's one show. What about all the other shows? Well, he, yeah, but he's, he hasn't been around long. He's only he's like 24. Yeah, but he's still got fifth at Arnold now. Don't think he's natural, man. Fifth? Don't no. think he's natural. Oh, by the way, yeah. Is he natural too? No, is he fuck? No, no. You don't think so, eh? No. no. Not the gains he's made. Well, maybe from the Arnold to the... Because <laughs> he's put on a serious <laughs> amount of muscle. Uh, so, it's lacking something, isn't it? Yeah. I feel like it, it kind of... Uh, 2017, I was at the Olympia, and the buzz around the was, classic. How was it? It, was, it almost out- overshadowed the Open. What? Yeah, honestly. That, yeah. I remember it was beat with Sergio and uh, the I was, classic. I was there, and, and honestly, at, all everyone was talking about was the classic. It, well, that was a year it kind of exploded, and I think I kind of expected it to keep going up, and then mm. it kind of just went a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. feel like I don't know what they need to do. I don't know. I don't know because there's a lot of good guys coming through. We in the need classic. bigger prize money. That's for that's for sure. I think the guys need to step up a bit more with their promo. But then again, some of the open guys aren't doing much. No, but class, you're not seeing nothing, do we? No hype. No, there's nothing. You just see pictures, and it's just yeah, like I mean, just... George Peterson does a bit. He, but he's good. He's good. Yeah, he's pretty good. He's got a good. We had him on Global Muscle uh, a couple of months ago. Good energy, great personality. Doing great with NPC Online and the yeah. Bev Gym thing. Yeah, you and... see him do the interviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. good. Goes to schools, talk to children. Yeah, yeah. That... So he's but he's an exception. And, and that wasn't like a photo opportunity. He actually does that. Actually, <laughs> you can tell though, can't you? What's the fakest story we've seen from, from back in the day? The bodybuilders going somewhere, taking a picture, and going home. And I think eating, some eating of the... pasta and playing PlayStation. But. <laughs> <laughs> but how can you I think you can tell by the way the photos put together I think you can tell sometimes that you just know they've just turned up that one time for that mm. one hour because their manager or who somebody has said look you know do this it'll look good for you good photo opportunity Flex Lou is the opposite of that uh, yeah 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 yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. does Flex do anything with charity I, don't, I think he I'm has I'm not sure I'm sure he has I'm sure yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll ask him I'll ask him I've just never I've never asked him actually. I think he's busy with his businesses, but I think, I'm sure he has to do something because yeah, he's yeah. the sort of person that would. You know, he's got a big heart and it's genuine. Feel he the opposite of that charity. Oh, that's <laughs> the opposite of what they're. Of, yeah, well, yeah. I went to Phil's uh, autism event and uh, he raised fifty thousand dollars that night. And I've sp- and I've spoken several times with Phil um, about that. So I I because I, I, I did probe him a little bit. Victor Martinez is also opposite of that. Well, because he's got a child with autism. Correct. Yeah. So that was great. So yeah, there are some people putting in the yeah. extra effort to but give back to the community. Now, while we're here, next March, I want to see a lot more people at Phil's Autism, uh, Make It Fit Autism event, charity mm. event. It's at the piano bar. It's literally right behind the Hilton. Mm. So it's a two-minute walk, five-minute, mm. ten-minute walk. So please, well, John Delarosa was there. Uh, Buendia was there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was there. Um, and that was it. I didn't really see anybody else. I saw a lot of NFLs and famous people, but I think we could have seen a few more bodybuilders and shown Phil a little bit more support. There's some new talent coming up. Nick Walker, 24-year-old. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Find him, please. Nick Do you know what, though? Walker. What a load of negativity on what I've seen thrown towards him. Where, where's his physique going to go from They're here? They're haters, bro. It's called, you call them in Norway, you call them for haters. Yeah, but I didn't understand it. I'm like, this or kid's trolls. 24. He's like, what can he really do? Can he? He's 24. And he's this big. Wet. It's like he's gonna get better and better and better. Nick Walker on Instagram. Yeah, Nick Walker. Bring him up, Chrissy. Chrissy, Chrissy pops. This is guys twenty. And oh, after him, there's also Patrick Tor has a 21, 20 year old guy. Is that Florian? 
Florian Paulson. Can you bring up um, also Florian? That's a very distinct name. This kid is incredible. He's competing. I, I, has he turned pro? No, I don't think he's turned pro yet. No, but, but this. Do you, and pro, do you know what he reminds? Do you know what he reminds me of? Who? He's like the next Dennis Wolf. Oh, very impressive. He's 23, 24. and I think if he's not pro, he's going to be turning pro this year. Uh, forgive me, because I might. I've, I should have. Are we finding Nick Walker? Sometimes we just talk about these things on the we're fly. We're you not know? finding Nick Walker. You can't Nick Walker. No. Uh, Nick Walker, there we are, Nick Walker. Nick Walker. Nick Walker. Nick Walker. No, Nick Walker, bodybuilder. I don't think we're finding him, are uh, we? Nick Walker, people look Could, him up. Well, get Florian po Paulson up, please. Florian. Like Dorian, but F O L R I A N. Florian. Florian. F O L. Not F O L. F L O. There you go. There you go, champ. Yeah, Florian. Florian Paulson. No, 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 not him, not him, not him. Yeah, yeah. Florian, come on. Maybe, oh, Pl no. Maybe if you go to Patrick Tua. Yeah, go to P Tua. Patrick Tua, that's on Instagram. Yeah, Facebook's a waste of time, isn't it? Was that Instagram or Facebook? Only old people use Facebook, bro. Oh, what? Well, sorry. Have okay. you seen that Chris tried to act like hip people use Facebook? <laughs> Everybody <laughs> yeah, says yeah. Facebook. What is that? Facebook. He loves Facebook. What, I what's going to be the new, since you're a nerd, Chris, what's going to be the new thing after <laughs> Instagram, in your opinion? Because there's always something new. Something new coming out called Acebook. 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 Seriously? Yeah, I'll leave it at that. Have you ever heard of Face Party? No. Mm. Is it a bad joke? No, 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 no. Serious. It's a dodgy website somebody showed me once. Face Party. Yeah, a, a married guy was showing me. He was a, uh, somebody, yeah, many years ago. It's a dodgy. Okay. It's like Tinder for adults. I'm not into, into gay things. I'm into it's not bodybuilding, bro. Did you say gay? It's not gay. Oh, no. Okay, okay. Proper. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a few years ago. <laughs> face party. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's their faces we're, they're interested in. So Nick Walker and Florian. Go, that's go to some... P2, no, no, go to P-Tour on Instagram. We'll find it. Don't worry. You've got to believe. I believe I can, can fly. fly. Yeah, yeah. I believe yeah, I yeah, can yeah, turn. Yeah. Come on, I want to sing. Think about it even on me. Why don't we get a little sing song with Jeff Beckham on? Oh. on? Bring him on. Bring him on. So by this was time, that? the was episode, that? Jeff Beckham will be out. Even, yeah. Pete's, even Pete's not coming up. P to a. P T U O R. Uh, Nicky, uh, it's a Nick, uh, Chris is Hey, by the way. What? You're assuming I know how these uh, things are spelled, you see. You are I'm aware that Mr. Nick Power and Strength has 400,000 views. Good for him. Wow. Good for him. Good. How does he's he do it, well, bro? He's been doing what he's been doing for years, so fair play. 400,000 views. Nick. P Give us some of your views, bro. <laughs> P-T-U-O-R. Pass them over. Patrick Tua. There we go. Yeah, okay. Right, now, this is Peter. Go down, go, go, go. Oh, oh, yeah, maybe we'll see him soon. Now, we've got to look out for this kid, and he, you got to... You'll, there he is on the left. Left, left, left. That's him. This is Florian. There we Florian. are. Florian Poyerson. Look at that. How old is he? 24? If we go up 20, on yeah, his... Yeah, yeah, uh... go up on his Insta. Look at his legs. Fuck. Oh, hang on. Can we go... Oh. Whoa! Is, is, you he, see, is you, he 24 years old? He's like, that is Dennis Wolf's Look legs. Look at those thick legs. AJ, man. I could tell you that was Dennis Wolf and you believe me. Look at that. This kid is amazing. Wow. What is he? Hang on, hang on. Can we go? Can we try and find some info on him about his age and what he's doing? Hang on. Wait up. 20. There's no age. I believe this guy is. He's got 44,000 followers. I believe this guy is about 24 years old. Amazing. Very impressive. And he is... Can we get some info on where he's competing? It's all in French, isn't it? Oh, wow. Yeah, he's good, isn't he? He's good. Patrick has been raving about this guy to me. As he should, this as is, he this should is, be. This is Swiss coach Patrick Tour. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, look at that. That was a great picture. Oh, wow. wow. Oh, God. Artistic. You know, really, yeah, really beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I hope he don't fall out the window. <laughs> look at him. Leaning Tower of Pisa. Yes, yeah, I know where that is. That's not in Montenegro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so you can decide three people to have on that you haven't had on global muscle yet who would you choose oh. three people and people at home dm us who do you want to see who's jal's top three list i have mine ready already oh so you want to know who i who's your top three that you want one on and we got to speak it into existence you said magic ball type of bullshit you're doing you know the magic ball <laughs> Uh, Martin Ford. 
Okay. I want to get Martin Ford on. Top um, three. You can do whatever would, you want. I would like Rami on. I like Rami. I like him. Yeah. I know I'm a bit critical of his physique in the past and now, but I like him. I think he's a nice guy. I think he's a real... Um, I was about to say Kai Green then. <laughs> yeah, Kai Green. Kai Green would be good. But I'll, do you know what it is? It'd be a challenge with Kai because I, I don't want him to... I, get, I don't like that rambling stuff. Act like you're Kai Green now. I don't like it. What are you going to have for dinner? Um, well, you know, the, the universe will speak to, speak to me and blah, blah, blah. And th 30 minutes later, you're like, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Kai, what were you saying? Uh, and you just say you want Kai Green on, you're dissing him now, huh? I'm not dissing Kai. Oh, okay, okay, no, no, no. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think it'd be good just because I'd, I'd, lo I'd love people to go, oh my God, that's the best Kai Green interview I've ever seen. You really, mm. you really peel back the layers because he, he puts up a bit of a front. And I, I, I find that misleading. And I, I would like to get to know the real Kai. Because he's very, uh, he's very guarded, and I, I'd, I'd love to try and you, I, I'd be a challenge to kind of get past that. There's so many. Who's yours? Who's There's yours? So many. But right now, Kai Green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want Kai Green on. That's yeah, like number one. Yeah, be a good one. Michael Hearn. Oh yeah, Michael Hearn. Number two. I know you're gonna say number three as well. Sylvester Stallone. Be, uh, oh, Sylvester. Sylvester Stallone. Oh well. If you're talking like, duh, duh, duh. yeah, Martin Ford is not a body. Well, he's a bodybuilder. Arnold and the Arnold and the Rock. Okay, so now you're going. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. see you. <laughs> and I raise oh, you. And I raise you. Uh, I would really like to speak to Sylvester Stallone. You love him, don't you? I love, oh, I love oh. Sylvester Stallone. I think he's amazing. Oh. Did he? Was he just in the UK for a tour with Sylvester? How did that go? Yeah. Was it popular he's, he's or? Incredible. Such. I think he's one of these people like. Wow. He's very underestimated. I think people haven't... But if you look at actually his list of achievements... Oh, right in all this... Not all this film, but his most popular he film he wrote his, himself. Did he sell his dog? Sell his dog to... Oh. For the script for Rocky oh. One. What a story. What a story. Bought the dog back when he became a millionaire, whatever it was. Oh. Was it the same dog? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, boy. Hey, Rex. So. Just gave him some dog. Yeah, some yeah. I said, I'm, sure it was, I'm sure it was a white dog. It was a yellow one. No, do Sylvester. Get, do, I, do I get my three? Who's your top three, Chris? Come on, then. Um, I'd like The Rock also. Yeah. yeah. Can we do the same ones or? Yeah, come on. Yeah. Come on then, Chris. I'd like uh, Hulk Hogan. Oh, I'll take my list back. Hulk Hogan, of course. I want over Kai Green. Sorry. Bobby Lashley. And <sighs> final one, Jesse Ventura. I saw oh. wrestlers. Come on. What about bodybuilders? It's a bodybuilding show. It's a bodybuilding show. Hulk Hogan is a bodybuilder. He's a superstar. And Hulk Hogan is a bodybuilder. Uh, Just the body used to I've be. I've never been into the wrestling. That's nerd oh, shit. What's your favorite The Rock match? That's to me. That's nerd shit. Uh, come back to me in thirty seconds. Uh, my, <laughs> I have two. She, she cried. The Rock versus Stone Cold for a wrestling, first WrestleMania. And the other one was The Rock Hulk, Hulk Hogan in, in, in Toronto. They did WrestleMania. <laughs> yes. You know you remember that one. Either that or um, sorry. <laughs> no, I, can't, I can't remember his name now. The Rock versus Mankind? Mankind. Pete Johns. Was it Mankind there? Eh? Yep. Oh. What's your favorite last wrestling quote? What's your favorite wrestling match of all time? Brutus the Barber Beefcake. God. Versus? A match on Randy Savage. That's your favorite wrestling match? Yes. Of all time? Can we talk Most about Most memorable, yeah. Yeah, SummerSlam 88. Mine was Ultimate Warrior versus Hulk Hogan. WrestleMania, you remember that one? 90, oh, 91 or 90. Okay. That was... Is that the one when he used to shake the rope? Yeah. Like, uh, and then everybody, we thought it was real. What was, was his name? Herve Mitzug. What was the, the Her... Ultimate Warrior's name? Ultimate Warrior. What was, no, what was his real name? That's, he changed them to Ultimate Warrior. No, his real name. Always been Ultimate Warrior. You just don't know it, do you? No, he knows. <laughs> you don't know his It's real Jim name. Doug, jo, Joe Doug, Jim Doug, Joe. Jim, That's Joe. not the Ultimate Warrior's name. Joe. Even I know that. James Brian Helwig. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a cool name. That's what a physique, though. The long hair, uh, veins, the... Helwig. The Helwig. I wonder how they passed them drug tests, by the way. <laughs> I don't think they did. <laughs> well, <laughs> you have a story about Triple H, don't you? At the... Yeah, we don't go into that, do we? You said it many times. You want to go? No, into no, 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 no. Very private. Very private. We keep keep that on the keep yeah, it yeah, on yeah, the down yeah. low. Yeah, I don't want to get taken out. No, <laughs> I don't want to bump into me. Hey, Giles, that was confidential. Zach Khan was good last. Uh, yeah, episode, yeah, it? very good. Love Zach. <sighs> Zachy Boo. Zachy Boo. Yeah. We we do. We met in a men's toilet many years ago. Thirteen years ago. What we, happened in a men's toilet? He, he hugged me. <laughs> no, he did actually. He did. It doesn't sound like I'm sure. It's not, is it, we're not doing a Cliff Richard here. No, 
Do you know Cliff, Cliff Richard. Do you know what Cliff Richard is? Uh, no. That singer. I know Cliff Richard is. It's a singer, isn't it? Actually, actually, I don't want to get sued because he, he won a case where he got accused of that. What happened? Who's, what, what happened? Cliff Richard. Forget it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is it... Is it uh, no, I don't want to. Oh, no. uh, hugging... Me- no. Like George Michael in the bathroom in 96? Very sim... No, it wasn't similar to that. Was it similar to that? It was similar to that. <laughs> <laughs> So a hanky go. panky in the toilet with George Michael in 1996. Just to make it clear, you I did throw. not. There was no hanky panky between me and Zach in the men's toilet. It was outside the men's toilet. Or it, it was a bodybuilding show, and he oh, just okay. he just happened to bump into me in the toilet, and it probably looked weird to people walking in because he was picking me up, swinging me around, going, "All right, bro." Oh, was that? Uh, yeah, it yeah. <laughs> was quite nice. Really. How long are we going for now, Chris? <laughs> Thirty-five. I think we should wrap it up. Wrap it up, Jim. Should we wrap it up? No, oh, come on. Let's keep going. Let's talk about what are you going to talk about. Yo. We got so much, bro. We, 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 I know. We, we've got we we going all in. We always go all in, mate. Don't we go? <laughs> yeah. you, you're feeling tired, aren't you? You're aren't feeling you? hungry. I'm tired. I'm hungry. Yeah. yeah. Give us your two shout outs without looking at it. We haven't prepared our shout outs. Who should not go on Instagram? You remember can't name. Can't do that to me. Yeah. So you got to test your brain for a change. What's your first shout out? It could be whatever. Let's not be bothering me today. No. Who's your first shout out? And you gotta have it. You have yours. Are, are you there, Chris? Where's yours then? Come on, what's, what's yours? Your my first shout out mm. is to Sasha Born Karen. <laughs> yes, to Mish. That's a Very nice. great. Actor, yeah, what amazing way. method. Can actor. you find him on Instagram? How is that guy not being killed though? Did you watch the- that Made in America thing? Oh, I love. <laughs> That what? was very. That takes balls. That takes balls, man. Go down the to the he, south. He said about the one about um, implant. He'd implanted all these things in people's heads, and he said if you press this number on, uh, press this thing on the iPad, they'll blow up. They'll die. The terrorists will die. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, was yeah, so yeah, shocking. Yeah, yeah. And the guy's dressed up as a woman. And so this is my shout out today, oh. Sasha Bowen. Is it? Yeah, Sasha. Isla Saint Clair. That's his girlfriend. She's been home and away. Sasha. Oh, how do you say pronounce his name again? He is white supreme. What's that? What's that? Oh, he's, he's he's a genius. He's an absolute genius. Oh, what an act! What an yeah, actor! Yeah. Look at Baby Ali G. Baby Ali G. <laughs> 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 that's not, not one of yours. <laughs> oh, that guy's that one to the left. Do you remember when he go interview- up? Go up. Do you remember when he interviewed Trump? Yes. Do you remember when he interviewed Trump and he want, he asked him if he could uh, invest yeah, yeah, in yeah, his yeah, hoverboard? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you know the the. the Back to the Future. He asked if he'd invest in his hoverboard, and then uh, Donald Trump went get out. What's your favorite uh, 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 Sasha uh, Baron Cohen uh, character? Sasha Baron Cohen. Um, that's Trump there. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hoverboard. Yeah. Well, well, and well, he'd obviously managed because he, he said, "I'm with Channel Four. Can we not hear it? No. Oh bollocks. What's your yeah, favorite yeah, yeah. Sasha Baron Cohen uh, car- character? Because uh, he had many. Oh, Ali G was obviously the first. I mean, I used to watch him when I was living in London. 99, that was 20 years ago. Let me you up and down. That was 20 years ago. Say, stop. When he was saying, and he, had the, he was interviewing people, and he was, he was basically saying, um, he, goes, I'm a fe-, he goes, you're a feminist, right? <laughs> and of course, like, to hit, he had, he had, the joke was, he thought feminist meant lesbian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he had this quite a strict kind of, um, not uptight, quite serious feminist and he was like saying, so then you two, you're going to get it on and we'll get busy and stuff. And it's like, you could see they were just horrified. That's my favorite character. Yes, the miss. The yes, the miss. That... My wife, she's oh, dead. Oh, bore artist. But it is okay. I now yes, have another miss. wife. And then he, I shit in the bag, put it on the table. And when he dissed gypsies. Oh. And, oh. <laughs> was it? Um, and he is Jewish. What, what was it? The way um, Jews, beat the gypsy, oh. wasn't it? Oh, and they're all like, they're all clapping along. Yeah, great yeah, guy. Yeah. Who's your shout out? Yeah, come on, on the phone. Like, come on, one. use your brain, Josh. Be quick. One. My brain's dead, mate. Yeah, but really? come on, come on, give a shout out. Come on, whoever. I can't think. You come can't. on. No, my brain's gone dead, mate. Uh, what? What? Anyone? Or? Yeah. Who's no, your I shout out? I honestly, can't think of anyone. Doctor Jordan Peterson. There you go. My hero. For people who haven't shown them Instagram. Yeah, Does he have Instagram? This guy has helped me so much. Okay. For people who don't know Jordan Peters, he's a, he's a he was a clinical psychologist. What should I watch first? This anything. Is anything on YouTube. Please, please check this guy out. He's helped me so much. I'm, I'm, I'm joke. I know I joke a lot on this on this intro. That's a cool stuff. Instagram. Just only part. Let me see. And what does it no, say? No, me- this isn't his official Instagram. This is. Oh, this is but this is quotes from his books, from his lectures, from his... Jordan uh, Peterson. No, that can't be. He has a warning. No, that's not, that's not his. That's, that's not his. Yeah, that's just one with Jordan Peterson quotes. 
And I tell you what, if you want to look at motivational quotes, go to that. I'll Jordan tell you. Peters. Because it's truth. It's truth. Mm. It's helped me become a much more stable, happy, motivated, honest person. So, is. No, I love him. Absolutely love him. In fact, we had, I had tickets for my birthday. Yeah, and something happened. And then, yeah, he's, his, his wife. Uh, it was or... wife. So he's going to reschedule. So we're going to get, um, he's going to be in London. So I'm going to go, I'm going to be like in awe. Jordan Peterson and Batman are my heroes. Second shout out is Marcus Rule. Marcus Rule. <laughs> we, we want Marcus just, we have yeah. Jordan Peterson. Come on, Marcus. We have Jordan Peters, trained yeah. by JP on today, isn't it? Yeah. So we want Marcus Rule on. Yeah. Ma Marcus Rule is my shout out. Oh. Rule, no, that's Dennis Wolf, by the way. Yeah. But that's Marcus Rule. That's a guy who. Tell you, I'd like to come on the show. Marcus Rule, Sean Ray, Sean Ray, and Kevin Navarone, my two all-time favorite bodybuilders. To have them on. Yeah, yeah. And there's so many people you want to have on, so that yeah, yeah. we have many. It doesn't. The thing is, we've done 29 episodes now. We must be knocking on what 60, 70 guests now. I mean, remember when we went, remember when we, oh, remember back in the good old days? Let's reminisce. <laughs> Six Where months we, ago. <laughs> when we were young, young and dumb. <laughs> dumb. Yeah, now young, we're young, dumb and full months, of. Six months older and much wiser. Yeah, I think I am. Yeah. But we're, no, we're more evolved. 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 Thanks to our guests. No, yeah. I just, I. Which what guests have you learned most? From? Okay, let's go back now. Who has surprised you the most? Only positive oh. things now. Okay, yeah. Who surprised you the most? Pos like positive, su positively surprised you, and who? Which person? You can't surprise, surprise. Yeah. Surprised. Okay, surprise. Positively, Nathan Diasha. The last time we had him on, because that's the most recent one. Because I was expecting some. Because I see him all do the smack talk and the gangster talk and all that, and all being all cocky and stuff. And let me replax him one more time. Uh, 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 no, that's not correct, is it? What? I'm bad at accents, bro. Okay. How's the and, then, uh, and then the last time he came on, he was so, like you said, he was so, it was, it was like, I don't know, it was, it was different. You choose two. Nate and Diash, that time. And what did I learn? From, uh, what did you say about learning? What did from you him? learn from him? Oh, from him? I didn't really learn anything no, from really. him. No. no. Antoine Vallant I liked because I liked his story. So, positive surprise, you mean? No, that was something, um, and Phil Heath, because I was going through a bad time. Okay, okay. And that, we well, about two hours in, he just, something he said struck a chord with me. I think because you, once you talk for that long, because we were going for like two hours, hour and 50 minutes with him. And he just got to that point about an hour and a half in. And what he said, just, it kind of grabbed me and it connected with me. And I, I, I felt, I felt like that was a bit of a turning point for me. And it was because it was our first episode. And now look what we've done, you know, yeah. six months later. For me, I knew yeah. Phil Heath was, that wasn't, I knew it from the beginning. Yeah. It was like motivational. So, yeah, yeah, I knew it. What I knew you it. get from like, say, uh, so for me, learning might be Flex Lewis. Yeah. What do you mean learning? No, but because business, the, business, uh, the business sense, you know, the yeah. from the from doing that pigeon pigeon talk that Chris. Uh, <laughs> he hated that. Yeah, but no, but just yeah. the way you know everything, like how much he sacrificed to be where he was at such a young age. Also going to America also, alone. Do you think? Do you think he stands out for the sheer professionalism? Of course. He thinks about everything he says and does, and the impact it has on people. And I love that. I love that sense of responsibility. I really respect that. And the other, but, but most surprised, in a good way, not surprised, it was not, what, was George Peterson. Yeah, 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 oh. George Peterson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was, yeah, he was great. George, the I, man, I, I, the bull. I, I was chatting to him when he won the Arnold and we were chatting, I thought, oh, he seems like a really nice guy. And I know, I'm just trying to think, um, what was the funniest moment? Funniest moment? I know exactly oh, what mine oh, is. Empty, are you listening? <laughs> What about, yeah, that was uh, Jeff Beck when we were singing. Na, na, na. And you were like, totally get into it. And I'm like, na, 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 na. and Jar sat like this, look. Uh, what's going on? Like very white. I thought. <laughs> no rhythm, no nothing. Look, I thought, Chris, Chris. I, I, thought I, was Chris. The, I thought I was in the twilight zone. I was good. Okay, so other than that, what's a funny moment? I think the Jamie the Giant when he came on with the glasses oh. and the chain. Because I set that up. I set that up. Yeah, you set that up. Well, the Luke toilet paper. Uh, well, that was funny for me. It was very funny for you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> funny. Yeah, funny for me, but not for everybody else. Jessica Padilla shaking her and Joss getting all red. That was pretty good, too. You know, uh, Jessica Padilla. Yes. I have no comment to Living make. Living la vida loca. I, I tell you, it was a big surprise, but I, it's not that I was expecting anything bad, mm. but a really pleasant surprise in how classy this person was. Mm, Margie, Margie V. v Marvelous. Who's your favorite female we had? I'm absolutely. Who's I'm, your favorite female we had on the show? Oh, I can't say that. Say it. Uh, You're not dissing the others. It's just your favorite female. Margie was one that stood out for me. Yeah. Yeah, I like her. She's cool. I like Jessica. Nice I, Jessica. Like Mina. Me, um, I like Margie. Missy. Missy. I like Monique. Huh? 
Hang on, Missy was great. I like Missy. I like Missy, Patricia. Missy Farrell, because her last name's changed now because she's married. You're just yeah. reeling off all the names. <laughs> yeah. you just, you're just playing it safe and you're putting me on the spot, you bastard. And Missy Farrell got married to Matt. Matt Strength, his, uh, his boyfriend. Yeah. Her boyfriend. She's uh, lovely. Two weeks ago. And she watches the show. Hello. Yeah, hopefully he watches this too. <laughs> hey, Missy. And she had a great picture. Remember how clear this? Was that yeah. a clear? She had the clear. Who has the best Wi-Fi? <laughs> she, her. We're, we're struggling now. <laughs> she had the best picture quality. Yeah, Crystal. And, and she, Patricia today. And she just yesterday. joined Skype minutes before because she didn't realize she didn't realize we were doing it on Skype. So she said, give me five minutes to set it up. And we came on. She was a couple of minutes late. Whatever we were, you know, we, we were great. Can't wait to be... She had a uh, home gym in her living room. We've got to have a Christmas episode where we go through everything oh, yeah, and review yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And we want midget dwarf elves in the studio. That's so we a put very on. short dwarf. Are you going from the floor or from the table? You know, we have dwarfs in the studio with Christmas outfits. They're walking around giving us protein shakes and things I have, like that. Uh, I have relatives. <laughs> <laughs> From the Shire. <laughs> yeah, just let's go to the Shire. Put Hornswoggle, you know Hornswoggle? Yeah. No. Fit Finley, you know Fit Finley from, from, from Wales. His the, family the, are the very. Wrestler. AJ, yeah, AJ, AJ, his family have very hairy feet. <laughs> what? Episode 29. We got to go. Yeah. So <laughs> okay. Harold Kelly's coming on. Yep. Jordan is coming on. Jordan Peters. And. JP. Uh, Black Panther. The Black Panther. Say his first name, Danakovia. Danakov. Danakov. No, he said it, it. It reads a certain way, but it, he said it in a beautiful way. Danakovay or something. Danakovay. Right? Danakovay. What's a what in it? Classic that, that's guy. A, that's a like sort of name you kind of. That's the guy we gotta look out for for the future. I'll be very interested to see where he finishes at this Olympia. I hope he gets. I hope he gets some call outs though. I hope he gets you top know, ten. It's, I hope it's, he gets top ten. You know, it's not. Before we go, I love the condition. Before well. we go, what's going on with West Lovis? There's nothing. Well, he's, he's doing... What do you mean? What do you mean? Oh, we haven't seen nothing yet now. Did the Arnold Classic. He's been on the show. Oh, oh Wesley, Wesley show. was a good Wesley was a good guest. Oh, I want to see something from him, though. Like, what, like? Uh, he's, he's, some he show he's soon. He does loads or? of social media. He's shutting it down for the year now, isn't he? Mm. Uh, I was on the West of Business hype, remember, 2018 on the boards? All day, I, all I day. I think... I don't... He, just, he didn't get a great place in the Olympia, and he didn't get a place in, get <sighs> great place at the Arnold. I thought he got shafted. Oh, he got screwed. Tenth. Man. He got screwed. Tenth at the Arnold Classic. He got screwed. He was the biggest thing up there. Yeah. And he, his condition was good. Mm. I had him around seventh. I had him, I had him three, four spots high at least. MD. Are you listening? High Tech Pharmaceuticals. High Tech Pharmaceuticals. Yeah, big thank you to High Tech Pharmaceuticals, our sponsors. Really appreciate the support. Check out the website. Check out the supplements. Um, because at the end of the day, they make the show all possible, AJ. And after this, so mm -hmm. next week, we, we won't be... A, tell us about what we will see next week. Well... Because we're busy. Yeah, we're very busy because we're doing the eight-day, uh, eight, eight-day Phil Heath tour, the Globe Muscle Pro tour. Oh, lights starting to flicker now. Oh, poltergeists. I think that's, I think that's some nerd movie. That's some nerd movies I can get behind. Oh, you like horror? Stuff? That's a good poltergeist. What's your favorite horror film? Uh, the girl uh, with the um, either, Exorcist. Either Exorcist. That's. Since I'm a Catholic, also it's I like that you know the Jesus yeah. and uh, that very groundbreaking. It's still scary today. Oh, though. and I like Psycho Three with Norman Bates. I liked all the Psychos actually. You know when he plays his mom, that's not Psycho Three. Yes. Psycho One, the black and white one. No, number three. We has to, he plays his he plays his dead mom. You know it's him playing his mom. Yeah, but he's not. That's not the same storyline from the first one. I no, but Psycho been a few Three. Years. Psycho Motel three. Bates, the hotel, and yeah. with Anthony Perkins. Yeah. I tell you a really good horror film, As Above, So Below. Okay. But the Paris Catacombs, that's a really good that's one. That's a good one. Yeah, really good. And um, Descent, when they go down potholing. And I hated those... the movie Scream, by the way. Oh, Not crap. Scream. Yeah, that the... was when they tried to make horror films mainstream. No, the one they clicked on the, 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 the TV, remember? You don't... Don't look, you, you'll die or whatever it was on the TV. Oh, The Ring. Oh. I've not seen that. That was very, it was, have you seen it? I've not seen it. Oh, I didn't like it. Because that was a Japanese one and then oh, they I made was... an, uh, a British one, didn't I they? didn't like it. Yeah. Phil, next episode, Phil Heath. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a pure Phil Heath tour episode. So we won't be in the studio. We will be out in the gym. Yeah, but we will be doing an intro with Phil Heath. That's true. Yeah, backstage at the audience with, yeah. which will be history by the time you've seen this. So... The, uh, we've got to have a third member in our crew. Seven-time Mr. Olympia Phil Heath. So, so next be episode fun. will be a Phil Heath tour yeah. episode. Yep. Where yep. we film around. And okay. we have Pierre Bernal on the team. Oh, oh yeah. Well, it'll be history by the time you see it. And we have Rolls Royces in our videos. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We got female bodybuilding stars in the videos. Well, Phil Heath won't like that. So we can't have that. But yeah. mm -hmm. Yes, it's going to be good. It's going to be fantastic. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait.
And we out. MD, yeah. all yeah. this. Okay, that, yep. I hope you've enjoyed episode 29 of MD Globe Muscle Radio. Is it episode 29? 29, yep, 29. Sorry, I get confused. And uh, yeah, and we'll see. Hey, look, it's been a long day. And we out. And we are out. See you next week. And welcome back to MD Global Muscle Radio here at the Pump Meter Studios, joined by my co-host, AJ, all the way from Norway. And we're joined by Dan Kavay Anderson. The Black Panther. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, thank you. Dan, am I okay to call you Dan or? No, no, call him the Black Panther is better. I can't keep calling him Black Panther. Okay, okay, okay. Why not? Hey, Black Panther. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great to have you on. We, uh, I, I first saw you, well, I didn't see you in person, but I had some people of mine were doing the classic um, in, uh, was it in, in the UK? Which class did you win again? What show was it again? That was... Um, Where you turned pro. Ooh, that was... Ben Weeder. Ben Weeder Classic. Ben, ben Weeder Classic. Weeder. And all the yeah. people were like, you got to check this guy out. Yeah. And we saw the pictures and was like, wow. We were so impressed, weren't we, Giles? Incredible, yeah. Incredible. Yeah. And then we just heard the news. You just won your first pro show, huh? Yes. Yes. Surely did. Oh, that show was amazing. That show was definitely amazing. Did I expect to win, but I had a great mindset going in. So, so tell us more about yourself out. before you go into the show. Tell us more about who are you? Well, I'm, um, my name is Dankovay Anderson, of course. I'm 27. I was born in Guyana, but raised in Brooklyn, New York. So a um, little switch back and forth. Um, I'm currently in the military, uh, active army. Mm. So that's kind of rough as far as like bodybuilding goes, of course. I but can, um, I can tell by the confidence. So you're born in Africa? No, no Guyana, South America. Oh yeah, South Basically America. Basically the Caribbean. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And when did you move to America? Um, I moved there about. I say 13 permanently, 13, 14. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm basically Americanized at this point, but I still love my Caribbean food off diet. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Curry, I love um, Curry goat. I got into bodybuilding while I was in the military. I mean, I always loved bodybuilding, but I was more so into sports. So I got into bodybuilding while I was military. My first show, I leave in 2016, where I tried to do open. <laughs> oh, you tried to do open? Um, because classic wasn't out yet, so sorry, well, sorry, Dan. Where I was, it wasn't there. Dan, what what weight what weight class were you when you were competing as a bodybuilder? Um, I stepped on stage at one one eighty four, I believe. That's my stage. So you would have been a light heavyweight. Yes. So you were yes. you were eight pounds over the middle weight. I was because I was I was visualizing you as like a as a as a middleweight, but you're obviously bigger than a middleweight. I I think you'd have been a fantastic light heavyweight because you got such nice symmetry. Yes, I love, I fell in, well, open made, made me fall in love with bodybuilding, basically. So yeah. I wanted to do open all either 212 all my life, but then then they brought out Classic. Mm -hmm. and, and I was like, I'm going to try this. I'm yeah. definitely going to try it. Then my first show in Italy, um, Pudova, and my second was when I earned my pro card in the UK. How did it go in Italy? Italy was fun. Um, I won my class, of course, and then of course, uh, <laughs> I, I like that. The, I like it. I like it. I lost. I lost the overall battle, of course. But it was a pretty good show. <laughs> pretty good show. Yeah. You got a question? Yeah. Yeah. No, um, I forgot I was gonna say that. Sorry. I was just listening to the story. Yeah. 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 So, so, so how was your? Uh, how was it? How did you turn pro? What happened there? In well, the Leader Cup. After Italy. Right after it, right after my show in Italy, that's where I met my current coach, Eugenio. I think I'm butchering his name, but Eugenio. And we spoke at we spoke at Italy, and we saw we talked about a plan. I was like, you know what? Let's try it out. Mm. So we prepped, we prepped for the UK show, and I got to the UK. And one thing I love is posing. I love classic posing. That made me yeah, you can tell. just love the whole classic physique. The posing is amazing. I feel like it creates. It creates such a form, such an art. Like it just draws attention. Who's your favorite so, poster, by the way? Before, who's your favorite poster, by the way, of all time? Well, honestly, I pull a lot from everybody, but if I had to zone in I, on at least 
Surgeon Brain Flex Ooh. Wheeler. At least. <laughs> as far as posing goes, it will be Lee Lombardo will be one. Oh. That's your yeah. And um so, Francis Ben Fato, of course, will be the second. Francis oh, Ben Fato. Yeah. Well, I yes. Suppose, yeah, so you, I'm problem. happy you know who these guys are. Yes. <laughs> oh yes, yes. I I was you a young man and I praise the legends. They're those guys are there for a reason, yeah. and they definitely set they definitely set a set a pavement for us to yeah. do what we do today. Do you remember Thierry Pastel? N- no, honestly. <laughs> Go, he was a protege of Serge Nubre. He competed in, uh, it was around the, uh, about 91, 92 for a few years. Go and have a look at his physique because when I, when I saw some of your overhead poses, you actually reminded me a little bit of Thierry Pastel. Mm. Um, oh, really? Unbelievable physique. I mean, I, I don't know whether he'd have made the classic weight limit, but uh, he was very much along the lines of Lee Labrada and, you know, the kind of, the, basically what embodies the classic class ne- today, you know? So Thierry yeah. Pastel, have a look at him because he's. I think you'll be. Uh, he's like a. He's like a little thicker version of Serge Nubray. Definitely, I'll check him out. I'll yeah. definitely check. So him. how how much? Um... Back to his story. Sorry, maybe. sorry. Go on. Back to England. Continue. With your coach. okay, yeah. So we um we got to England. Actually, like England was bit of, was a bit of a fight with my body weight. I'm not sure what happened, but with the short flight, uh, my weight cap, of course, was. 180, 182, I believe, as an amateur. Okay. So when I was coming into England a day before weigh-ins, mm-hmm. or I think it was, no, two days before weigh-ins, I took the flight over there, and for some reason I popped up like 10 pounds overweight. Wow. And I'm like, what the hell is going mm-hmm. on? But it stressed me out a little bit, but not too much. We went in, I weighed in, I weighed in perfectly, and from there on, I just zoned out. Every time I start a show, I zone out. Like, it's all about the stage. It's all about... It's all about feeling great for me. Mm. So, and then we won. <laughs> so. See, that was a very, um, I mean, from that contest, I didn't actually go to that one. That was the one I missed. But um, the one thing I heard about was everyone was raving about the classic class. Because remember uh, Vosloo? Yeah, Arnold Vosloo. Arnold Vosloo, he took, was it third place? Mm. And I think when we, in the lead, we, we, we thought he was so good. We thought, well, there's no one, no one, unless he's in a pro show, is yeah. going to beat this guy because he is so good. And then all I heard about was those two guys in the classic. You and obviously the guy who came second, and they were raving about it. Everyone was, remember George White, he was raving about it, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, saying yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. God, he says, I've never, they were the absolute standout athletes of the entire contest. That's why I'm so happy you won your, your rookie debut. Yeah. Yes. That's, that means yes. that, ru- yeah. He did a Wesley. The rookie debut was, <laughs> didn't it? Yeah. Wow. That, that, that was amazing. Like, I'm actually a huge fan of um, Santi, who competed also. Santi Aragon? Uh, Aragon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and I didn't know he was competing oh. until like uh, the list came out and I saw the list. I was like, oh shit, to compete against somebody you actually, you know, look at sometimes the videos and like, wow. It's, Who got it's, second, it's... by the way? Huh? Who got second in that show? Second, uh, I'm not sure his name, but it wasn't Santi. No, it wasn't Santi, you know? Oh, okay. Uh... Santi was third, was he? F- third or fourth? Fifth, I believe Santi got fifth. Fifth? Oh, you're beating some good guys there. Yeah, yeah. Beating okay. some really good guys. So you saw Santi on the list and then. Yes, I saw I saw him at the weigh-ins actually. I didn't say nothing to anybody, but I saw him at the weigh-ins and like after they called our numbers up, I went up and I couldn't hold and I was like, dude, I'm a huge fan. Can I get a picture with you? <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Brilliant. And he's like and he's like, of course, he was a really cool guy, so he didn't mind. He's like, of course, bro. And I was like, man, it's an honor to compete with you. He's like, yeah, we're gonna be standing next to each other and all this stuff. Really cool, didn't expect it. But um then it came, it came stage time, and of course I zoned out. I, I zoned out, and I went up there, and I just, I just did what I had to. Uh, I believe you beat Lee Banks, correct? Yes, he was second, I believe. Lee yes. Banks. Oh was yeah, second. yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan of Lee yeah. Banks. Big How do you, Banks. did you thought you had him? Because I thought it was close between you two guys. Did you thought you had him? I or? thought it was really close between us. I love, I love, I love his physique, and he can pose too. He's yeah, very yeah. Good. But I thought it was really good. close good. between us. Um. I try not to not to not to look at him too much, but every time I was posing or every time we change poses, I look at him and I'll be like, "Okay, this guy is still here. <laughs> <laughs> they are not moving this dude." But I feel like it was really close between us, and I love I love a close bat. I hate I hate like a, a runaway show. Mm. So back to back front doubles have us up there for like a good twenty minutes. Oh. I love it. Yeah, yeah, I love it. So I live for it. So you're lit- are you bang on the weight limit? No, actually, when I weighed in, I weighed in at, 
I believe, 190, but that was fully clothed. Right. When okay. uh, I didn't take anything off. So, and then... so what movement have you got? Huh? What movement do you have for the weight limit, for your weight limit, for your so height? For my weight limit, I believe the cap, the cap is 193. 193. Wow. So what? Sorry, yes. what? So you weigh 190 in clothes. So what? 188. I weigh 190 189? with clothes on. Yeah. So yeah. about maybe 188. Yeah. So I'm. What I'm leading to is for the Olympia. Are you looking to sort of? Uh, do you actually? Are you looking to try and sort of gain muscle, or or you just want to basically see how you look shredded at the Olympia? Shredded. Shredded. Yeah. Shredded. That's, that's, that's yeah. what I want to hear. And also, how does it make you feel? You you are a student of the sport. You're going to the Olympia in your first year as a pro. Yeah. How does that make you feel? That it's past excitement. I it's, would it's nothing. That. It's nothing I could really explain because you go in like you start with a with a mindset that okay, this, the Olympia stage is my goal. You know, mm-hmm. not only is my goal to win the Olympia, it's one of my goals. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so to qualify or to even compete there. My first year is beyond anything I could explain at this point. Theory. Oh, Giles has a theory here. <laughs> if he does well at the Olympia, sorry, what are you doing, Chris? Sorry. If he does well at the Olympia, I think there's an argument for him winning Rookie of the Year. Think about it. Because to go from winning your pro show, winning your first pro show in a, in a very, very good contest, mm. It all hinges upon how he does at the Olympia. If he does well at the Olympia, I think there's a very, very good argument from winning Rookie of the Year. To be fair, is there any rookies at all this year other than him doing anything? No, I don't think there is. Oh. There's certainly no Open or 212s that have had your kind of impact as a pro. And the thing is, now with the classic class gaining in popularity, I think it should be a consideration. So you're going to this Mr. Olympia. You're excited, you're pumped. Uh, what's your expectation? Are you there to compete or are you there just to be there? My thing is, I honestly contemplated going to the Olympia before because I never go into a show, any show, just the place. I never do. That was, ne- that was never my intent. Any show I go in, not to be cocky, but any show I go into or I step into is to win it. Mm. I want to have a clear chance of winning that show. The Olympia is different. The Olympia is different. I'm not saying that there's guys that, I'm not saying that I wouldn't beat anybody there. It's just that I have to compete there. Like, it's something in me that, there's no way I can say no to it. No, 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 no. You know? What? So I'm very confident going into Olympia. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna brush that off. I'm confident as hell. I have no doubt in my mind that I will place well. If it so happens that I don't, then I don't, but I have no doubt that I will. What would you be happy with at this year's Olympia? Huh? What would you be happy with placing wise at the Olympia? Top five. Top five. Top five? Yeah. Top five. Who, who who's your favorite classic physiques currently competing? In a cla- no, who's the favorite classic my favorite, competitor? My favorite yeah. classic physique, I don't think he's competing this year. It's actually Ruffin. Oh, I Terrence Ruffin? Terrence yeah, Ruffin. What's, what's happened to Terrence? Huh? Uh, what has happened to Terrence? Because he, he looked sensational last year. And he, like yourself, he's also a very, very, very good poser. He's an um, amazing poser. And he takes it so serious. I'm I love a survivor. It. But, uh, I <laughs> Music. I feel like he's taking time off to like yeah. build his physique and build his weak points, which I, which I give props to, I think. Mm. That's a great idea, but I, I, I love him on the stage. That's one of my favorite classic physiques. Okay. I'm very curious to see Dan Cave at, uh, compared with Keon. That's something I would love to see at the Olympia because I think Keon. two up-and-comers, I think I would, I, that's, that's two guys, two new guys I think a lot of people are going to be looking at. I want to see him with the first call-out. I want to see him against Breon and them. Yeah. I, th- I think there's going to be a bit of a switch-up this year. I do, and I think there's going to be a switch-up. Do you talk to some of the other classic guys or? Say that again? Do you talk to, do you have a relationship with any of the other classic guys at all? Um, a relationship? Not, not entirely. Like we'll talk here and there, like a few picks and stuff. No mm. bad blood, but we're not really that close to be honest. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we just wanted mm-hmm. to have you on to, um, cause we were excited with you. We saw your package. Mm-hmm. We saw you all the way from the beginning. <laughs> We were happy when you turned pro. What a year! When I saw you come, well, I saw you online beating uh, Lee Banks at, at, in your first show. I was like, "Oh, this is gonna be this is fantastic!" Yep. So we want to have the first interview with you. Is, mm-hmm. this first, is this your first interview ever, or? 
This is definitely my first interview. Oh, wow. <laughs> Fantastic. So we're really excited. We're going to this Olympia. So and we'll definitely interview you at the Olympia. We're going to interview at Olympia. Yeah, make sure you grab us. I'm excited for it. Because we're, we're it. excited. We're excited for this, aren't we? Yeah, very. Yeah. Yeah. So good luck at this Olympia. And by the way, I'm also happy that you, I thought you were German. <laughs> no. so German? I was expecting a black <laughs> German guy. <laughs> And I'm very happy he's an American. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It doesn't sound right when they speak German. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Dan DeVay, have you got any uh, thank yous or any shout outs for sponsors or anyone yeah, you want to thank? Or? Yeah, yeah. I only um, I currently have Golden Aesthetics. That's all That's all I have. As far as nutrition, I have no one Golden yet. Aesthetics. So shout out to Golden Aesthetics, of course. Artemis, love you, bro. Um, my coach, Eugenio, of course. My support, my family. You guys know who you are. I'm not going to name everybody, but... And thank you guys for having me on the show. This was amazing. One question. I like Artemis Dolgen. I've seen a lot of him. What's going on with him since he's, he's the owner of Golden Aesthetics, his sponsor? Okay. What's happening to him? Is he competing again? Is he... There's not much going I don't on believe, with I don't believe he's competing. He's definitely going a different route. But um, he's doing great things in my, in, my, in my mind. I love his clothing. Mm, I love his personality clothing. and what he stands for. So... I'm not. I don't think he's definitely on stage, though. I don't think so. Okay, he's a very ins motivational. Uh, he makes videos <clears throat> yes, that he is. motivate you. you. You got to with a cool name like that. Artemis Dolgen is very cool <gasps> guy, and he's he's a, he's a guy who wants people to rise. Yeah, you know, he's, he's not a negative yes. guy. So that's yeah. I like him very much for that, and he likes the classical physique too. So yeah. good. Well, good to have you on. Okay, uh, 27 years old, won his first pro show, pro debut, going to the Olympia going to make an impact a lot of eyes are going to be on you and i'm so glad to see more good poses in the pro league it's uh, it's a huge condi what's the two things i like aj condition and posing thank you <laughs> and where can people follow you what's your instagram account we got to get your numbers up yep. my instagram is the dot black underscore panther nice yes Please <laughs> follow follow the journey I'm here for it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Give this guy a follow and uh, let's show some support to this absolutely incredible rising mm. star. So, uh, yep, all the best. And we will see you in Las Vegas in 10 weeks now, is it? 11 weeks. 11 weeks. 11 weeks, huh? Shit. Most definitely. Most definitely. Shit's getting real now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Dan Kavay, uh, thank you for coming on. And, uh, yeah, all the best for uh, it's 11, a pleasure, guys. Thank 11 you. weeks thank time. You. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Yes, fantastic. fantastic. Great personality. Yeah, really nice guy. Authentic. Really nice. 27. 27. Yeah. Won his uh, debut show. Mm -hmm. Going to the Olympia. His yeah. first year. I really like getting the new guys on, like the Quint, um, the Quinton areas, right, the, yeah. the Joe Siemens, you know, these new guys that, you know, the 20-something-year-olds that, uh, I mean, to win your first pro show, you know, that must be, I, I imagine how that feels. <sighs> You know, you turn pro, a couple of months later, you're winning your first pro show, in, in a, and it's like a good, really good stacked pro show, mm. and you're going to the Olympia. I mean, it, you know, it must be so exciting for him. It must be so exciting. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Okay, well, we'd like to get all the new talents. So, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed that interview, and we'll be right back after the break with our next guest on Globe Muscle Radio, and we're out. And welcome back to MD Global Muscle Radio here at the Pump Meter Studios, joined by my co-host AJ, all the way from Norway. And we're joined by, how many times? Harold King Kong, the Ronnie <laughs> Coleman of wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Harold, Harold. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. How are you doing today? Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, yeah, like we met last year at the, the Arnold Classic when you won. I mean, uh, I mean, how many pro titles have you won now, mate? Well, yeah, I'm glad I got a, a good, accurate number. Last two or three weeks ago, they got me at 18. 18. At the Europa, I won my 18th one, yeah. 18. So yeah. now you are the, uh, you're a wheelchair pro. Um, do you want to tell us, right. a, just, just tell us a bit about yourself on your uh, your bodybuilding journey for the sake of the viewers that might not be so familiar with you? Okay. All right. So, um, always worked out since high school, college, played a little football. Um, and then I started in a different league, in the NGA league, um, um, back, in, I guess, late 20s, 
28, 29. First time on stage was 30, and I was competing in NGA League. Um, I did that um, up until uh, I had a car accident that happened in 2007. Mm. When I had a car accident in 2007, um, you know, uh, I was out for a little bit, and then my wife was telling me that they had a wheelchair uh, class in the NPC, and I was like, okay, all right, let's check it out. So we started doing that, and then I think they came out with the first time I qualified. 2010 was a qualifier for my pro, and I think the first like ever, Houston. the 2000, yeah, Houston, yeah, 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 yeah. My friend, I know, I know, no, I did the uh, Luke. Luke had a show in Louisiana. Okay. Luke did a wheelchair. I think it's a, a it was a was a, it was a qualifier or something like that. Luke did that show. Yeah. Then the first ever, um, I guess the pro show. Yeah. Was in Houston. Which yeah. was the following year, 2011. That's right, because my, my friend, yeah. my friend Dan Smith came third in that contest. A British wheelchair pro. He won the yeah, world, yeah, yeah. He won. The, yeah. He got his pro card at the 2010 World Championships in Poland, and then he competed uh -huh. against you. And I remember when he came back because I interviewed him for a magazine I was working for at the time, a European magazine. And I said, so uh -huh. I said, mate, I said, I saw you guest posing. I said, how did anyone beat you? And he said, there was this guy called Harold Kelly. He said, my God, he was incredible. <laughs> he said he just completely completely obliterated us <laughs> dan was bigger than me sorry dan was bigger than me was no yeah yeah i looked at dan and i was like whoa no. yeah dan's bigger than me dan's well, big but you're then, bigger back then, back then dan was bigger than me i grew over the years mm. yeah 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 well, even yeah. then i remember you i remember seeing the pictures and i went oh i see what you mean now yeah but what yeah, and then we did i think dan and i did a uh the uh the body power too Mm -hmm. In England. That's right, yeah, in, that's right. Yeah, 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 I met him over there also. Uh, one question, can we go back to the car accident and what happened? Okay. And, and, and and also, how did you keep on going? And like, what was this in a dark place in your time? And like, things like this, because yeah. I haven't heard these stories before. So. Yeah, okay, so... um, uh, 2007, we had a car accident. Um, I was carrying my wife to uh, Oklahoma, uh, no, Arkansas. Was it Arkansas? Yeah, is, this Arkansas. Your, is this your wife, by the way? Yeah, that's her right here. Hey, baby. Hello. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Team Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> so the boss. we was going to Arkansas, but leaving through Texas to uh, Oklahoma, we had a car accident. I tried to miss some deers. It was early in the morning, like 7 in the morning. Mm. And so there's a lot of livestock on, on the road. And I was slowing up, slowing up, slowing up. Then eventually we stopped. I got me some uh, honey bun and, and, and milk, you know, I diet, the honey bun and milk. So I grabbed that real quick. I got back in the car and then, I, and then she asked me how far are we from Interstate 4. And I said, we're not too far now, maybe 10 to 15, 20 minutes. So when we got back on the interstate, the reason I'm saying this is because it's very, very valuable in the information. Because when I got back in the car about one or two miles down the road, that's when it happened. Mm -hmm. So we swerved, swerved from hitting the deers. And I went all the way down the ravine. My phone was in my pocket. So when I called 911, I told them exactly where we were. Mm -hmm. and they, because it was like, how you know where you're at? Because I told them I just up the gas station, so I'm not too far from it. Mm -hmm. And um, and then we had to get ourselves out of the car. The car caught on fire. And instantly, when the seatbelt pulled me downward in the car, I felt my legs was like me feeling on someone else's body. Uh -huh. So, yeah. And I thought it was severe pinched nerve because I had that feeling before when I was sitting down too long and your legs get numb and like, okay, I can't feel anything. But I felt it. And um, my wife's foot was stuck on the right of me and my daughter was behind me. All of us in seatbelts. Okay. So she had, um, so we had to push her out the window at the back. My wife was still stuck. We was trying to pull her foot out. When we got her foot out, we got her out the window and I had to get back through the back seat through the back of the car out of the back side at the back of the trunk of the car and then we had to slide ourselves in a little manhole because the car had caught on fire oh. so we slid we slid in the manhole and stayed there until some people came down the hill when they helped us out they yeah. pulled us up the hill and then they already had a, uh, a helicopter back um waiting to take me out the car yeah was, there yeah was nothing left of the car. yeah it was nothing left the car car burned up um yeah. but my wife my, my daughter she left out with her um a broken wrist. Okay. And when my wife, she had a broken jaw, broken collar, collarbone, two broken ribs, and crushed her ankle. Yeah. Were you wearing uh, a seatbelt too, or? Yeah, okay. yeah. I was wearing my seatbelt also. Mm. I was so wearing my seatbelt. So how also. long? How long was it before you started training, or did that, did that obviously help with your rehab? <sighs> yeah. Well, we went to uh, Baylor. Baylor Medical, um, they, they, they checked me out. T11, T12, they fused it and put rods in it. And um, yeah. then they put the shell on me, you know, 
uh, yeah. for the heal itself. So, yeah, you know, yeah. was it a dark spot in my life? I mean, I think the biggest thing was I had an older son named Bam Bam. He's he was nine nine at the time, and um, him and his cousin, which was the same age, they became inside my bed. Mm. And his cousin was like, you know, they already saw me, you know, working out, bodybuilding, a pro NGA bodybuilder before. And he and he he asked me, um, "Are you okay, Uncle Laverne?" And I was like, "I'm okay. Are you okay?" And I asked him, "Was he okay?" And I asked my son, "Are you okay?" He said, "Yeah, as long as you okay." I said, "I'm good." And then they went off, start playing, and right right then and there, man. I mean, honestly, right then and there, when I really lay back in my bed, I'm like, "If they're okay with it, I'm gonna have to be okay with it." So let me figure out what I need to do. Hmm. Wow. I mean, right right then and there, man. I mean. And that point right there was a pinnacle point too. I'm, I probably was like, what am I gonna do now? A little bit, a little bit, I'll, I'll, you know, straddle on the fence throughout the whole period until that point. When they hit me and told me, asked me, you know, say if I'm gonna be okay, they'll be okay. And they start playing, I'm like, okay, so what do we do now? Yeah. Let's go forward, let's, let's ride. So there was no depression or nothing involved? Uh, not then, not wow. then. Uh, and, and I'm originally from South Carolina. I'm old country boy, I grew up on the farm. And my, my dad was a Vietnam vet. You know, and I tell people this all day long. My dad taught me a long time ago. Um, and I got a little story, too, to share with that. He taught me a long time ago, don't worry about what you can't do. Focus on what you can do. Mm. And, and, and again, as a young boy, uh, coming home from school, we had a big yard to cut grass and stuff. And I want to ride my dirt bike. So I got to the house, pull a lawnmower out, to, you know, cut the grass. Well, no gas in a lawnmower. Oh, I'm good. I'm I'm safe. I don't have to cut grass now. So mm. my dad comes home with 18 wheeler and whatnot. And he's like, Laverne, you cut the grass? And I'm like, no, there ain't no gas in the lawnmower. Oh, he laid it on me. He don't I don't care if ain't no gas in the lawnmower. When I say do something, you do it. Don't figure out how it's not how it can't be done. You figure out how to get it done. I don't care if you walk to the gas station. I don't care if you cycle gas out of the <laughs> out of the lawnmower a tractor. I don't care if you get gas out of the car. Mm. I don't want it done. So I grew up that way. Mm. My dad, my dad was on me that way. He grew up, he made me, he put embed that in me. So I think when that happened, that kicked in. Okay, so what do we do now? Ooh, phone's going. So what do we do now? Yeah. Right. So my biggest thing was, so what do we do now? Um, do I have some down days? Yes, I do. You know, um, but when you have a team, um, your, 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 your right-hand person, your wife or your, your counterpart, your partner in life, when you have your children supporting you, your sisters behind you, your whole family's behind you, your job, which I was a manager of 24 Hour Fitness, and the, the RVP of 25 Fitness came to the hospital and told me, whenever I want to come back, my desk is there. Don't worry about my desk. It's oh, there. Oh, that's, that's nice. Great. That's when good. You, when you have that support team behind you, I mean, now it's your choice. What you going to do? It's your choice now. It's not, it's not the other things around you. It's your choice. Mm. So I chose, it, I chose to keep going forward. Mm. So what about when did you decide to start? Obviously, how many years was it then before you decided to start competing again? I'm just trying to work out the timeline. It, so 2007. Seven. And then back on stage in 2010. Wow. So in that, in that, there was no other competitions. Really. There was really no wheelchair stuff going on yeah. that much. Oh, yeah. It was Nick. But was it Nick? Nick started. Right. Nick was Nick, trying to get yeah, it started yeah. right. But I was still going, man, after the next year, I was still going to competitions. I was still going to the um, Europa shows. I was going to different <laughs> shows with my wife, yeah. you know, because she was in fitness too. So I'm still going out there. I felt a little odd in the wheelchair a little bit, you know, but at the same time, I still love fitness. So I still was out there and I still worked out. I'm at, let's see, four or five months after getting out of the hospital, I'm back in the gym doing stuff. Yeah, and matter yeah. of fact, at rehab, I'm telling them, they're telling me, here, those, those dumbbells are too heavy for you. <laughs> and I was, I, was doing, uh, I was in rehab, I was trying to, you know, shoulder press through the 30s or 40s. <laughs> oh, that's too much, sir. That's too much, sir. Put them down. I said, mm. I'm used to doing 120s. Yeah. Oh, I'm my used to God. Doing yeah, yeah. So, and I had to teach them. I said, look, if you want someone not to blow their shoulders out and they have to transfer themselves, yeah. why do you have them doing 20 pounds when they weigh 150? Of course, they're going to blow their shoulders out because they're not stressing that muscle to the point to where they can lift 120 pounds up. Mm, so they have yeah. to build the muscle up enough to be able to lift themselves up so they won't put the stress on their shoulders. Yeah. They're like, oh, and I said, well, who is the, who's the, who's the, uh, who's the person with the certification here? They're like, well, we don't have certification. We get taught what to do. I said, oh, no, are you kidding me? I said, let me speak to the, <laughs> let me see the person in charge. So when I talked to her, went in her office and started telling her, she's like, oh, okay. So you know what you're doing, right? I said, yes, I do know what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. How do you, how do yeah. you prep? How do you prep? How do you prep for a show? How do you do, what type of cardio do you do and things like that? Because 
It's not everything you can. <clears throat> well, um, so a lot of people have that that question. See us, and how do we get ourselves ourselves in our shape? Yeah, it's not too far away from the way you get yourself in shape. Mm. It's really not. Cardio. They have a cycle bite. Yeah. That's our cardio. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. I have that's, guys, what my, that's what Dan does. Guys, my friend Dan does that. I know. Yeah, but yeah, I have yeah. guys come here every day at the gym. Oh, here, I see you get your arms on that bike really strong, huh? I'm like, no, no you <laughs> nah, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see you get your chest real tight on that bike. I'm going to do that bike. Like, oh, no. I'm sorry. No, it's not that. It's cardio. I said, I said look. I, yeah. So I told him to look back behind me. I said, see the treadmill, the bike, and everything else you're on? Yeah. I said, that's cardio because you have legs to walk on it. We don't have legs, so we use another part of our body to increase the heart rate to burn yeah. calories. Yeah. That's the difference. Oh, okay. So I said, so when I see you on this and you don't need to be on here, Don't be honest. <laughs> But do you have to do said, more? Excuse one question. Do you have to do more of that than regular cardio? Or does it burn the same amount of calories? Actually, it burns less. So you think I would do more. Yeah. But with me, with me and the guys in a wheelchair, and yeah. we all know this, we have to be extra careful in what we eat. Yeah. Our dietary, our diet situation is totally different from the normal. That's the difference. Not, okay. It's not that we don't have legs. Okay. Yeah. It's that cal it's the basic calories in, calories out. Mm. It's back to the basic calories in, calories out. If I'm watching the calories in, they're not going to be sitting around. Yeah. If I'm eating lean stuff, it's not going to be sitting around. Okay. I can't have cheat days like, guys, y'all hang out, do this, that, drink some beer, da, da, da. No, we can't be doing all that because that extra I had to get off. So if I don't yeah. put it in, I have to worry about getting it off. Yeah. So I, I eat lean. I eat good year round. Now, do I eat Do I eat uh, Waffle House or do I eat uh, uh, Wingstop? Do I go to Wendy's? Yeah. I hope But that's so. not every day. That's not every day. That's yeah. every blue moon. If me and my wife want to go out to eat on Sundays or we go in the restaurant, okay, we go out. I don't, I don't, I don't like, no, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. No, but I still watch what I eat when I'm there. When I'm there, you know, salmon, uh, peel off rice, mm -hmm. uh, red potatoes or whatever. I'm eating good stuff when I'm there. I'm watching everything that I'm putting in my system. And our digestive, our digestive system is a little different being that wherever your T level is, have been um, uh, injured, everyone is a little different. Being that mine is so low, I can control a little better than a, than the higher ones, just T six, yeah. the five, and the fours. I can control a little better than the rest of them. Yeah. So as the yeah. as the number one wheelchair pro in the world, because my friend uh, Dan Smith, um, wheelchair pro, he's he has a lot of um, like people in wheelchairs coming to him asking questions about rehab and you know and to help him with things like their mental health and that you know they're struggling and trying to help with their sort of uh, physical mobility and everything. Do you get a lot of people? Um, you know, in wheelchairs, maybe recently injured, coming to you for advice and kind of motivation? Yeah, um, we definitely get that. And being a manager of a gym, they all come to me. Okay. I mean, wheelchair or not, they come to me. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 of course. In general, they're going to come up because, again, yeah. they see your structure. No, you 40 years old. How do you keep yourself the way you keep yourself? Yeah. And, you know, just that advice alone, just nutrition. I always put mm -hmm. nutrition back to number one. Mm. Wheelchair or not, nutrition is number one. Mm. Now, being in the wheelchair and then another person trying to relate because the other guys in the wheelchair, they don't even want to talk to nobody but in the wheelchair. You don't know what I'm talking about. You don't know how I feel. I don't hear nothing from you, but they want to talk to someone who's in the wheelchair. So when they talk to me, they know that we're on the same same level. Mm. So even with them, I'm telling them again, how are you eating? Oh, yeah. And the same response to people who are not in the wheelchair, the same response. Yeah, I need to work on my meal plan. Yeah, I need to work on my meal plan. <laughs> so I'm like, it's the same thing. It's the exact yeah. same thing, bro. And um, and being in the wheelchair, I said, you know you got to watch yourself even better. You have to watch your nutrition so much more in tune with it because you can't get to the restroom. You can't just hold the, whatever you need to hold till you get there. You know how it is. So he's like, yeah, you're right. So back to number one, nutrition is number one, what you put in, calories in, calories out. The back, back to the basics. And there's no, there's, no, no, there's no new thing under the sun. It's back to the basics, even a workout, mm -hmm. back to the basics. Wheelchair workouts, if I say, well, okay, Harold, how do you work out? How do you get yourself that size? Okay, what do you do to get the size? Well, I do this, I do that. Okay, I do that too. I just don't do legs. Uh, what I just don't do legs. What motivates you? Because when we saw you the last Olympia, uh, I don't want to downgrade the other competitors, but it's a clear okay. difference between you and number two. It's like night okay. and day. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. What motivates you to keep bringing that package when you know you're so superior than the other athletes? I've never seen him off. I've never seen him off. Because well, it's must because you are on a different level. Mm -hmm. What motivates you okay. to stay at that level? And one thing, who did you have second? We had, <laughs> I had the Indian guy, uh, uh, Chris Dim. Great respect China. for him, what he did. Yeah. But I had yeah. the guy from India beating him. Who did you have? He was fantastic. Uh -huh. And be honest, okay. be honest. We need, <laughs> we need some wheelchair drama, bro. Oh, wheelchair man. drama. <laughs> Why are you going to do this to me already today? Okay, so you want the first question or the second you question? Answer the first. Uh, first, <laughs> second question first, and then the other one. The second question first. Okay. You know what? I, I, I know you, because you're like, no, he, that's hogwash. <sighs> I really don't look at other competitors. I don't. I don't know why. I, I think if you really ask me, I'm, I'm thinking back. Do I have a nod second to, uh, second to me than to, to Chris Dem? Each one is missing something. Chris had more size. A nod had more definition and symmetry. Well, not too much symmetry because I could tell what he was lacking in some spots. So that would be a hard decision for me to say, bro. I, I'll just be honest with you. That'd be a hard decision for me to say. I, I really don't want to compare the two like that. Um, I, I, that'd be hard for me to say. Um, the Indian guy was very good, though, wasn't he? The Indian guy was you very good. Tell, yeah, it, it would be hard for me to say. I have to look at the pictures again. Yeah. I'll be back to the judge there. I'm going to have to compare these poses. Compare, and I've never done that. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't, I haven't uh, compared. I don't look at those guys and see who's next to me or who I need to worry about. And then back to the first question, why give my drive? I want to, I want to, I want to better myself every year. I want to look better every year. I want to, I want to. And I told a guy the other day, man. Me and Reggie talk a lot. You know, Reggie, Reggie Bennett. Reggie. He, he's a guy from Vegas. He's a he's a competitive. He came like third or fourth. He okay. came second yeah, to yeah, me yeah. Up one year. Uh, Reggie Bennett. Yeah. Um, and we we communicate a lot with a dog and whatnot. But um, my thing is this right here. I want to get myself to the point to whereas. I want to ask Phil, which I love to death, and Sean, which I love to death, and Dexter. I want all four of us to take a knee. I want them to take a knee beside me, and I want to do a real double, real double back. Uh, <laughs> yes. And I want them to, I want them to, you know, kind of like say, okay, wow, you know, yeah. we have to choose here. Yeah. That's where I want to get myself to. So oh, I'm looking at those be, as, yeah. as my guidance. Yeah. I'm looking at those guys as trying to get to their level. Mm. Kevin Levron, Kevin Levron, ever since I was growing up in high school, Kevin Levron and Sean Ray was my guys I was looking at. Yep. I was looking to be like Kevin. My my physique and Kevin's physique was almost like spot on. And I was that's what I was chasing when yeah. I was doing bodybuilding a long time ago. I was chasing I'm feeling Kevin. that. I'm feeling that. <laughs> that's the look I really want. Yeah. You know, so... But when Phil come out, and like, even with Kevin, he just exploded even bigger than the Kevin look and still looked great because I never did want to be the real big bodybuilder. But when I saw uh, Phil, you could be the real big bodybuilder and still look great. Mm. So... That's what I want to take it to another level. So right now, that's what I'm chasing. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not looking at my group yeah. and trying to stay ahead of my group. I'm trying to be a part of their group. Yeah. Who's your I'm favorite bodybuilder of all time, Harold? Favorite physique of all time? Kevin Durant. I just, I just said it. I, it was Kevin <laughs> oh, until, until it was Kevin. It until was until Kevin. Kevin. It's not Kevin. It's Kevin. Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant. He's gonna say it Sean Ray. Kevin and, you want to say Sean Ray? Sean Ray, uh, yeah. No, Sean not, Ray no, not mine. I thought you said Sean Ray, but not mine. No, no, no. No, Sean Ray is phenomenal. Sean yeah, Ray just amazing. had a, a little less than Kevin, if you ask me. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, this it, it is compact, and I'm I'm six foot. Kevin, uh, Sean, I mean, uh, Kevin is around what five nine, five ten. Five nine, yeah, five yes. nine and a half, yeah, yeah. Right, <laughs> and Phil is five nine and a half, five ten. Hmm. Right, and I saw my structure like that more so than Sean. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So who was your favorite? You didn't say. <laughs> uh, I would say Phil. I hate to say. It. I, I would say Phil. Phil. That's yeah, my boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy. yeah he's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Harold, are you pleased with how the the wheelchair class has evolved? Because I've been to the Arnold Classics. I've been to the Olympias. I remember it when it started in around two what, 2011. Now, wasn't it? I, I, the, the Houston Pro was the first one I was really aware of. But are you pleased with now? Now it's at the Olympia. Are you pleased how the class is evolving? Do you think there's a you know what's your take on that? 
I'm very pleased. I'm very pleased that the doors have been open for us. I'm pleased with Jermaine's decision allowed to go forward. I'm pleased with Nick's dedication to keep pushing mm. our class on that platform. I'm yeah. pleased with all the support. Like right now, I'm on muscle development. would have never been happening if it wasn't for that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm pleased with that. There are some things that I'm not pleased with. Um, but they're not, not nothing big. Um, I'm not pleased with a lot of the sponsors not looking at us as being a, a very good asset to their product yeah. because none of none of us have a big sponsor. I don't even have a sponsor. I never had sponsors since day one. I miss Olympia really? five times. You have I, you have no I, sponsors. I, I, and I sent information out there. I have not one, not one. That's what I'm not pleased with. I'm surprised. But, I'm surprised. Again, I know everyone is. Everyone is. And I, I don't have not one sponsor. No one reached out to me. And I talked to a lot of people outside of the Miss Olympia, a few female sponsors. competitors who've been to Miss Olympia, yeah. a few other <clears> ones, and, and they, don't, they don't have major sponsors. I said, oh, okay. That's very so strange. That's, that's very surprising, because um, uh, the first time I really met you was um, was last year at the Arnold Classic. And if you remember mm-hmm. backstage, um, Nick said to uh, Nick said to Ron and us, and he says, oh, he says, Harold's coming out now. And we went, oh, well, grab him for an interview. Ron took the interview, and I filmed it on my phone. I've actually still got the footage on my phone. And and I was, it was one of those ones where I was filming it. And I was thinking, shit, I wish I'd done this interview because I didn't because re- you were such a good talker. You were so, I was watching it. And you know, when you just, you, you're, you're watching an interview and you think, I wish I was the one doing the interview because I, 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 your energy, you you like, I was, I was, everyone was just kind of listening. It was like silence. It was backstage at right. the Arnold Classic, you know, on the side. Bit. I remember that. I yeah, remember yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was that. just like, I just remember, I remember thinking, this is you're a perfect representative for the category. You know, you're a good talker. You know, fantastic physique. And, I mean, have you ever done anything like motivational uh, speaking or talking at schools or anything like that? I have done. I have done talking at schools. I want to do more motivational speaking. But I've, I've been attacking high schools, elementary schools in our local area right now. Yeah. So I'm putting my cast and I'm casting it out there to do a little more motivational speaking. Then they want you to take a course and you have to be certified as a speaker before the bigger companies look okay, at you. So okay. I'm looking into that right now. Yeah. I, I'd like to see you take that national or international because I think I think your message, because I was listening and I watched the interview afterwards. I was back in my hotel room and I watched, uh, watched it. And I was thinking, this guy's got a really good message. You've got a really good story. It's um, and it's it you know, and anyone can relate. Anyone can kind of be inspired by your story and who you are as a person, and and what and kind of the kind of vibe and message you you put out. Yeah, yeah, I, and I really appreciate. It. I, I really like talking. I really like talking to kids. Um, Spread the information. We say, like, a lot. <laughs> she said, a lot. He likes talking. <laughs> but I like, I like, I like spread the information. If I have it, I, I feel that you know the creator give everyone certain things. Yeah. And if you're not doing what he gave you to do, you know, you need to look back at it and be like, why you have it is to tell others to express others and mm. express it to others so they can get a part of it and then make their lives better. I, I honestly believe that, and I feel that in my heart. So I'm doing more of that right now. Like I said. Um, but the sponsorship thing will put me in a bigger, yeah. how can I say, arena to be able to contact more people. Yeah. But, you know, when, and I look at the whole understanding of it because a few sponsors told, ask me, the first question they ask, how many followers you have? Or, oh. you know, what are your, yeah, that's what they'll I say. Hate and, and, I hate like, that. I hate that. I know, I know, I know. Oh. And I'm seeing you, know, you know me, I'm going to give it to you real. And I'm like, oh. well, I'm not the one who's going to buy spons- buy followers no, and stuff no, like no, that. No, my no. my no. followers are my followers. And if that be the case, then I'm good. You know, yeah. you look at it that way. I, I'm okay. I'm okay. And, yeah. and you know, what I have you- my own product line. What? I have my um, King Kong Nation line that I, that I promote myself. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy. I would really focus on the motivational speaking and not to the fitness industry, but to regular people. Yeah. Just like Phil, okay. he- Phil Heat now, he yep. stepped out of the bodybuilding uh, landscape a little mm-hmm. bit. He's talking to regular and professional people. And when you show up with your size, but in a wheelchair, it grabs your attention. Yeah. So that's right. and, and if you go and then the personality and if, and if you go that route with the certification on these things, the sponsors will yeah. come. The sponsors yeah. will come. Howard. AJ's right. Right. It's that's Sounds not even good. And especially with also your wife with such a great shape and you know I've seen right. with your fa- I've seen your family. They're all healthy and together. And yeah. there's no right. way that this won't motivate people. 
mm. but you don't have right. to look at the fitness industry. You can go to the regular people because right. they appreciate right. you more than the fitness people because the fitness people is yeah. more in- more interested in Instagram at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah, how many followers you have? How many? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Feeling it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where did your yeah. wife compete? By the way, we see the pictures in the background, and yeah. how she's still looking. Physique. Uh, women physique, um, Ronnie Coleman, a few Ronnie Coleman's. The Battle of Texas. The Battle of Texas last year. Texas Cup. Texas Cup. And, um, yeah, just last year we did two. Mm-hmm. A few years before year we did that. We took a, a hiatus off to get her her levels right, uh, hormonal imbalances. We learned a lot of that, about that through her system. Mm. Um, we just learned a lot. And on the, under when we see um, people that come here and our clients, we teach from experience mm. and that's why people love a, a lot about us because we teach it from experience. You have your book knowledge. That's one thing, but experience is another whole monster. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And being able to be in the business for years and years and years, most people respect that and they see that. And a lot of our clients come to us for that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So are your, your wife, your wife's amateur. What, yeah, where does she compete? Is it NPC? She, she is it... still, she still, she still NPC. Uh-huh. She still haven't, uh, she haven't claimed her NPC uh, IFBB Pro card yet. Female physique or? Yeah, women physique. Yeah. So mm-hmm. when, when we when's get... the Pro card? <laughs> well, we don't know. We we like, ask the judges every time we go up front. We always ask them what she's missing. They will tell us she definitely improved her hamstring. She improved this and she improved that. But yeah. now they want her back to come out a little more. So, you know, we're doing what they tell us to do. Yeah. Um, um, and I feel that we probably need to, you know, venture a lot a little more, go to Florida, go to mm-hmm. Miss Memphis, go to Tennessee, go to Oklahoma, go to different states. We've been just in Texas with it. So next stop, we're going to start going outside of Texas. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Have you, yeah. Um, have you yeah. ever had any much media attention in the mainstream media with your story and your kind of, and the fact that you are the world's number one? Yeah. Have I have I done? Have you have you oh, had any like mainstream kind of media attention or sort of people wanting to know your story because it's it's you know it's just um, the fact that you are you know you're the world's best at what you do. Right. We have we have a uh, we had a television deal. Um, oh, NBC, wow. NBC did a little episode of me. Oh nice. Um, um, we did uh, another one with um, um, God uh, Chad. Is it Chad? Make 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 a chat. We did an interview with chat. Yeah, chat. Yeah, there's another guy who did an interview with me. He posted it up. He did a long interview. Um, Nick Nick um, Nick Strength. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Nick Prince. You did an interview. He did a, he, he not an interview, but he took a section of my whole. He he followed me. He he found information because in the NGA league, he yeah. found when I was competing then, and he did a deal on me on on, oh, on his yeah. deal. That's which really he represented great. me, and that was yeah, that was great. He just did it off the of, of GP yeah, because nice. he said I, I I need recognition out there, and he said he wanted to put that recognition out there because I think he competed in NPC also. He remembered me, NGA. Yeah. He competed in NGA also, and he remembered me. Yeah. So that was really good. I, when I saw that, that was very exciting to me because I'm like someone just took me up and That's and great. represented me and put me out there, you know. Um, and right now I'm doing more videos. I'm I have my um my YouTube station. Nice. That I'm doing more videos. I'm showing a lot more. Exercises guys can do in a wheelchair. What's the name we, of the YouTube channel? Uh, Harold Kelly. Mm. Okay, okay. Okay. It's Harold Kelly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And my Instagram is Mr. O underscore Mr. O underscore wheelchair. Nice. Mm. And uh, and again, I, I do stuff on that. I talk on there also. But again, this year I think I'm gonna do a lot more. I want to get a. I want to do a collaboration of the uh, a CDs a workout uh, a complete workout phase one, phase two, and phase three. I definitely want to do a collaboration, something to get out there in the hands of a lot of the guys in the wheelchair, so they don't know exactly how to do it from beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Yeah. What's the difference between all three? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I'm doing a lot more on my behalf. On my behalf, I'm trying to do a lot more. So I mean, I saw you at the Arnold Classic. Um, tell us about your most recent win. Um, the Europa. Yeah. Was it two weeks ago? Two weeks. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago the Europa. Yeah, yeah. I did that one. Um, one first again. The second place guy, he was a little upset. Oh, was um, he? <laughs> he, was, he? He looked great. He was lean. He was leaner than me. I'll be, I'll be honest. He was leaner than me. He was more, he more like really vascular. But the, the point he missed was, this is bodybuilding. Yeah. You have to bring size first. 
and everything else comes under that. That's what you I know? say. He disagrees. <laughs> no, I'm, a, I'm a conditioning freak. No, Sorry. you want the Sorry. size, bro. I'm a, I'm a conditioning this is freak. bodybuilding. Yeah. Sorry. People want to see the freaks. Sorry. You have to be conditioned. You have to be yeah, conditioned. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, of course. But it's still, it's like it's like having a race car. You got nitrous. You got you got nitrous. You got turbo. You got all this, but you don't have. You, but you you run a 250 motor. Yeah. And you yeah. Need a 50 and 600. I mean. You have to have the size first, and then from there, you have yeah. the everything else comes yeah. under the size. Yeah. Now, you can't be size and nothing else. I understand no, that, too. No, you can no, no. dig yeah. up there and not know no lines and no definition. I understand that, too. But sizes, and, when, and then me and my wife went on the, on the site, on NPC, you know, what's the criteria of bodybuilding? And mm. even on that one, the first thing says mass. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing says mass. And then it says conditioning, and it says symmetry. But the yeah. first of all, all yeah. is size. Not, not so much, not so much. Uh, yeah, AJ so, likes mass, I like conditioning, so. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so okay. again, this is bodybuilding. It's not men physique, it's not men classic, it's mm. men bodybuilding open. So that's that's how I look at it. So he was more conditioned than I was, and I, hands down he was. I ain't, I'm not going to argue there. But my conditioner was not was not off to whereas uh, it, it pulled me out of where I need to be. Harold, um, but my size is there. Harold, have you ever not won with a clean score, clear score? No. Re uh, so every single pro show that Harold has won, he's had it lights out clean. Mm. What's the word? I'm, what's the word I'm looking for? I have no idea. <laughs> um, yeah, like, yeah, lights out. We'll go with lights out. Judge, judge number one placed me first. Judge number two placed me first. Judge number three placed me first in all the categories. Yeah. yeah. So you've never uh, even had a second place since turning pro as a wheelchair pro. Not that I'm aware of. I don't look at all the cars, but all the cars that I've seen, it always been the wow. person in all the categories. Wow. Okay. But like I said, it's, it's, now don't get me wrong. I lost one show. I, I came in third in the show. Which one was that? When? 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 Uh, Dallas and Ropa. Nick Nick came in first. This guy named Neil came in second. I came in third. What year was that? 2004, 2013. Really? I don't know. 12, 13, 13 or 14. What happened? Was what was wrong with that prep? Something was wrong in your too personal many, life. Too, too many trips to Wendy's, maybe. <laughs> too, many, too many eye hops. <laughs> Man, you know what? I'm going to take, I'm gonna take <laughs> my L and I'm going to go with it. I lost and I'm going to announce it. I lost. And... Come on. Come on. Tell us why. <laughs> Got a bit cocky, baby. Got a bit cocky. This is winning too easy. Okay. I I try to put a more size on that show. Right. Okay. But if you go back and look at the pictures, if you go back and look at the pictures, you make determination. Okay. 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 Well, we'll go and look go on the internet. You, you make determination. Yeah. yeah. You make determination, and then you say, "Well, I still don't see it." That's your decision. Yeah. This judge said I came in third. I came in third, and I swallowed it. But okay. I was trying to put a more size. Um, which I did put on one size mm. coming into the following year. But the crazy part about it is mm. I just did the, the, was that the honor? We did the honor that year? No, we didn't do the honor. We went to Canada, right? Yeah. We did the Canada and then we went to England. Yeah, you did Canada and you won first. Right. I went to Canada, I won first. We did England, I won mm. first. And we come to Europe and I won third. I'm like, uh, uh. So anyway, I lost. How, Harold, who do you see? Who do you really rate? And who do you think is really coming up that could really close the gap on you? Nobody. <laughs> I don't. Okay, Reggie. I tell Reggie this all day long. Reggie, Reggie looks great, and Reggie can do his body, his structure, his body. He can, he can get up there, and he can, he can push me to the envelope. He can push the envelope to me if he get the size. What, what is he? Is he, is he, he what is he in terms of? Is he, is he? Does he match your condition on shape? Because you're very thick, round. You've got great genetics. I mean, you look like you know you. Yeah, his conditioning, he can get his condition peeled. Right. He can get a peeled condition. And he has some muscle. He has muscle. So if he but put he a little bit more size on, he, he right. could give you hassle. Right. Right. Him. Right. Um, okay. If, if uh, Gabe, Gabe, right? If Gabe can get his conditioning right. Mm. Gabe, what? Just Last that. name? Gabe from um, England, Italy? He's from Italy. Yeah. He's from Italy. Guess where Gabe's last name? Gabrielli. Gabriel. He just won Canada show. Oh, okay. He just won the Canada I, show. I, I think that Indian guy is Arnold. 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 I don't, Arnold. Arnold. Yeah. Arnold. Arnold. Yeah, I thought he was. He, I mean, the crowd response to him was amazing. I thought he was. He was a new face, and when he came out, we went, "Whoa!" You know, it's like. He was, yeah. I thought he. I think when, if he nails his condition, I think uh, like big full it, chest, and he's kind of got big muscle bellies like yourself. I. I was. I think everyone was very impressed by him as an up and comer. 
Yeah, he didn't, but he didn't show anything in Canada. I don't know whether he oh, just really? dropped, the, dropped the, the bucket on the Canada. He just did the Canada show and he came in second to oh, Gabe. Okay. 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 Yeah, he just came in second. And uh, his app development is not there. I don't, uh, I don't know what that is. Mm. His app development is literally not there. He has small waist, but he has no abs. Is he, is he, um, is. is he like, do you know what um, level of um, um, disability has he, he had, with the spine? He, he, he train his abs? He, he had an operation that paralyzed him. Rock. Oh, God. He had an operation that paralyzed him. He didn't have an accident. He had an operation that paralyzed oh, him. Shit. Yeah, so it wasn't exactly a spot. It was an in injury. It, I think it, cancer? Was he there pulling cancer out of something? They had some kind of operation Anyways. and it paralyzed him. He impressed right. me. Maybe he's doing the old Mr. Olympia trick that they didn't want to say who really. You, when you ask the bodybuilders who, who are you afraid of, they always mention somebody else. <laughs> than who they are no, really I'm afraid not, of. I, I'm, not afra I'm, not a, I'm not afraid of not. Right. So not I think a not is too small. Okay. Too small. When I'm, when I'm, when I'm at my best, I'll overshower him. Yeah. He's just too small. It's almost like, mm, like, like I love um, William Bonac. William Bonac? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah of course we know William Bonac. Phenomenal, phenomenal. But, and he could be 100% dialed in, but if you stand beside Phil, he, he, he just too small. Yeah. Who's your, hate to say I was, who's your top four open and top top four 212 for this Olympia? I was just about to ask. 212? That. First open, top five. <laughs> your okay, opinion. Five. Your opinion. Okay. <laughs> in, in regards to who's competing. Yes. So oh. take out Phil Heath and Kai Green. Oh, you know something, do you? Sean. Sean, definitely a top five. Uh, Dexter. Mm -hmm. I can't put Dexter out of it. Bonat, for sure. Um... Who's going to Rolly. Win? Rolly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm, hmm. Kylie, who is. Well, I, I think I, somebody I, new. I, somebody I, new. No, no, he's missing a big name here, bro. How <laughs> missing a big name? Yeah. Rolly tomorrow. Uh, Rami? No, he's not doing it. He's not qualified. Okay. Yeah, Kobe, have you yeah, forgot about Brandon Curry? Yeah, I have. I have. I have his place in there because Ooh. you know, again, subliminally, I wasn't been thinking. But yes, he just beat Wonat, bro. That. Yeah, yeah. And yes, you're right. Brandon Curry would be a. But uh, who do you uh, think? Uh, but who do you think is going to win? Yeah, who's winning? Who's winning? Silence. I got Sean. I got Sean winning again. Oh. Again. Oh, again. Again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got Sean winning again. Yeah. I got I got Sean winning again. Who in second? Um, who in second? What who, do you like? Gonna... What do you like about Sean Roden's physique? Roden, Roden had this physique that that criteria is trying to get to. Hmm. Hmm. Roden got the physique that 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 they want to be on stage. That's the physique that what is the what... Arnold the Arnold want to show as is as bodybuilding. Which you know, is, he has which the, is? He, he has the, he has the X factor. Have the small waist. He have detailed muscles. He have separation. He have full his legs. Have full back. Now I see a few things you get bigger or whatever growing to it. Yeah, but who who's gonna stand beside him? So who's second? Who, who's who's second? Beside... Who's second then? That that's a hard one. It really depends on bone. It really depends on bone conditioning. Bonet? It depends on Dexter's conditioning. It yeah. depends on Rolly conditioning. Yeah. I mean, you can't say it. It depends on at the end of the day. It's how, how what they did is, is what they did. Mm -hmm. Because any of those four, any of those four is a major factor. It depends on their conditioning. Yeah, and they, all of them have it. All of them have it. But it, 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 any given Sunday, it's <laughs> any, every, any given Sunday on that one. Yeah, and two twelve say it because. I'm I'm not too keen on the two twelve. I'll be honest with you. You know, when your flex your flex retiring, you know. Hey, you know what though? Like I told my wife a long time ago, if flex comes to the open, they got problems. Ooh. So you're not interested in two twelve at all? Huh? You're not interested in two twelve at all? No, I don't, I, don't, I don't. I don't know it. I don't know it to the oh, yeah. to the point to speak on it. So I, I'll be just wailing. So, I'll be just wailing. So next year's Olympia and Flex Lewis comes in. Where do you think he's placing next year? You're saying he's going to give them problems. How big a problem is he going to oh, give he gonna, them? He'll give them problems. Did you see Flex at 246? I saw yeah, a picture yeah, of Flex yeah, at yeah. 246. So I was like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, never have fun yeah. Flex at 246. Wow. I was like, wow. You're impressed. Wow, yeah. He's going to be in the top five all day long. I, yeah. If you ask me, he's going to be in the top five. I mean, Flex, I've seen, I mean, Flex at 226 to 230, that's, that's, a, that's a top guy, isn't it? Open. Yeah. You see Flex, and next year, if he comes in next year, 
Cause that's did he say he's doing it next year? Yeah, he's doing yeah, it. He's, he's only thirty-five. He's doing clear right. twenty twenty. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Oh, he actually said he announced that. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I got. I, I got to watch that. Then. That's, that's, <laughs> who, who does your <laughs> wife? Who does your wife have winning female for C class this year? Hey, women. Uh, uh, women. Hey, baby. <laughs> who do you, who do you hey, have hey, winning now? C class this year. Um, yeah. Is what's your name? Uh, They don't follow too closely. Uh, what's the the dark, real dark skin? The younger. Yeah, what's Shanique. your name? Shanique. Um, Shanique Grant. What? Shanika, yeah, Shanika. yeah, Shanika. Okay, awesome. yeah. Awesome. My wife is my wife is a big Julia Julia fan. Julia. Yeah, me too, me Julia. too. Juliet yeah. Malakarna, Juliana oh, yeah, Malakarna. Yeah, 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 yeah. Beautiful she's physique. Ah, uh, we wish she came thing. back. Yeah, she's amazing. She's done. She's done. She's, she's done. It. Sadly, she retired huh? four times. She's yeah, done. she and see, yeah. she, that's another one that didn't get any big sponsors. Oh, that's true. And she won how many years straight? Yeah, Three, yeah. We had a conversation with her. Uh, had, she won four or five. Yeah, four, 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 four. four. Yeah. four. Yeah. arguably and, five. I'm, yeah, but ah! Dana, that one with Dana Lynn Bailey. Come on, she should have beat it. Not even. Come on. I, uh, well, I'm I'm a fa I'm a Malakan no, fanboy. No, I'm a fanboy. I'm a fanboy. She should have won that hey, we, one. We love Dana Lynn Bailey too. We love Dana, Dana, uh, yeah, Dana awesome. yeah. and uh, Rob. Yeah, yeah they they're yeah, good friends of ours. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, Nate. Oh, do you yeah. want to uh, any final questions you want to ask King Kong Killer? No, there's no final question. There's just uh, I hope you take this motivational speaking to a new level yeah. and focus on the non. -f well, you can focus on the fitness people, but it's the outside of the fitness world yeah. seem to appreciate what you're saying more. Yeah. Big time. Yes. Especially yes. with your physique, it's like wow, yes. who's this? And, right. and going that route will land you the sponsors and also. We will make sure on this show to not only have yeah. you have you back again, 100%. but try awesome. to, but try to focus on more wheelchair action. Like, uh, mm. tell us who you want us to promote. We'll help them, and we make sure that more people follow your class. Yeah, you right. know. And right. Uh, right. so just update it's us. It's gotta grow. It's gotta grow. And, we, and we're not just saying this to have a good interview. Now we mean it. So just. And I, I feel it. I feel it. I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. So that's what I want to say. Yeah. All right then, Harold. Yes, well, uh, I was. I'm, I was. Um, as soon as we started doing the show in December, you're one of the people on the list that I wanted to do because, like I said, I, I hadn't really heard you speak, and then I was filming you on my phone backstage, and uh, Jordan was filming Ron interview, and I was like, oh, I wish I'd done that interview. He's such a good talker. What I was, was your I was. I was blown away. So yeah, I'm really glad. Thank you so much for coming on. And um, yeah, I think uh, we're gonna be, we'll beat the Olympia, so we'll have to grab you for an interview there as well. I've got I'll have to grab your definitely, number. Yeah, let me know. We can set something out, and we can definitely sit and talk. Definitely. You know how one number two. Where yeah. can people reach you, Harold? <laughs> Harold, say your Instagram account one more time and your YouTube channel. Awesome. My uh, my Instagram is Mister dot O underscore uh, wheelchair. Okay. Okay. And my uh, my YouTube is Harold Kelly. Mm. Um, I also invented a few workout apparatuses. Oh, cool. um, it's under King Kong Nation, and you can go to Instagram King Kong Nation. Um, I was the first one. I actually invented the five star boot. Five star boot is why women put in their ankle and on the on the on the on his shoe to do butt kicks, leg curls. It, they connected the cable machine to it to do the butt kicks and stuff. Okay. Most time you'll see women do that, that deal around their ankle. Yeah. They're wrapping around the ankle. The ankle strap. The ankle strap. Well, this goes in your shoe. And I invented it because my wife, like I say, from the accident, she had an ankle injury. So she couldn't put that thing around her ankle. So I'm like, there's nothing going on the shoe. So I'm in my shop and I just created some webbing to go around her shoe. Mm. So when I did it, we did a, a provisional patent for it and we ran with it. And it's been going really great. Wow. Um, over over 6,000 units sold across the world. Brilliant. Um, yeah. And then number two is the easy strap. This is a deal with webbing. You have a, ha a handle on each side of this webbing loop, whereas a lot of women, like, you know, calluses. Sumo squats. Yeah, your sumo squats. You can put it around a dumbbell, loop it around on sumo squats, mm. and you can really do a sumo squat. Instead of trying to hold the dumbbell, mm. it goes around it and you can hold a strap. Or you can put it on the cable machine. Yeah, if it's on King Kong Nation, first you want to check it out. Check all it the, out. Uh, check all, it out. yeah, King Kong Nation. And then now mm. we just came out with the squat, squat blocks. It's a little wedge. Made with tube out, um, made with wood. It's a wedge that goes on your ankle, on your heel, so that you can get a little arch to your heel, so you can do a squat a lot better. You feel more in your hamstrings and take the weight out of your back. Okay. So I have a few more things that I'm coming out with, but um, but the innovative side of it is again doing things for my wife so that she's able to work out better because of her injury. 
So nice. the injury brought forth these ideas. Who yeah. creates? Are you the one creating this with a team or? Who's... Yeah. No, me. Period. Oh, wow, fantastic. <laughs> I invented that. That's on my name. Yeah. yeah. We wrote the, we wrote a provisional patent for it. Sent it in dot, dot org. Got a provisional patent for it, mm. and we ran them since then. Yeah. This is strictly us. This is not you know a team or anything. That's well, the team, me and her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Team. <laughs> team, Ke- yeah. team Kelly. Team yeah. Kelly. Okay, that's yeah, right. right. That's right. But I really yeah. want to appreciate you all having me on board because to give us exposure, the wheelchair class, mm. myself, our family, just giving us exposure. And I really appreciate that. I really do mean that. We'll have, we'll have to talk uh, our friend Dan Smith into making a comeback because he's, he's been a bit he-, he stayed at my house a couple of years ago and I said, come on, get your ass back up there, mate. So uh, <laughs> he's like, uh, yeah, well, you know, sponsors, blah, blah, blah. So uh, yeah, I'd love to get him back up there and get some more. <laughs> yeah. I want to see him giving you hell on, on the, the Arnold and the Olympias and uh, yeah, get, yeah, get more people involved and um, yeah, and just like I said, we'll just um, we'll do what we can to help promote you and the category because I think it's such a such a valuable uh, addition to the Pro League. So, uh, Harold, thank you so much thank for taking the time and your your lovely wife on her phone there. Thank <laughs> she, you. Uh, thank she, you. I think she's photographing you from behind. And um, yeah, uh, so yeah, with, uh, thank you so much for coming on, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in Las Vegas in September. Same here. Thanks again. Okay. Thank bye. you, Harold. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. There we go. The most shocking about this, he has no sponsors. What's going yeah. on with the industry, bro? <laughs> How could they? I have no idea. And you got these girls with asses hanging out with all their bought followers, oh. and they've got sponsors lined. Ah, oh, just I don't get it. Don't sponsors, get it. come that, on. I mean, just listening to. I mean, obviously, there's people watching uh, on YouTube, but there's people listening on iTunes and just listening to that guy speak. The end. I mean, every time I see him, he's always smiling. He's always got that energy. He's. Um, I've seen him with other people and interacting. I've watched him. I've watched him at the Arnold's, the Olympias. And um, yeah, there's a certain energy and there's a crowd response when you see him on stage. Honestly, when he comes out. I'm he's... proud of him that even though he's making no money on this, he's created this workout equipment. Yeah. So you've by himself. Yeah. Smart and guy. so he's an entrepreneur. Yeah. That's something we respect. A and lot. We, what else do we respect, family men? We also respect that he says size. <laughs> number one. Uh, and then one. it's condition. And then it's symmetry. Okay. Okay, well, that is important. So. King Kong, King, 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 King Kong. Kong. <laughs> okay, yeah. then, well, I uh, hope you enjoyed that interview. Uh, it's our first wheelchair pro, and he's the best in the world. So, uh, yeah, we'll go to an ad break now, and we'll see you after the break. With uh, guest number three. With our guest number three on Globe Muscle Radio, and we are out. <laughs> And welcome back to MD Global Muscle Radio here at the Pop Media Studios, joined by my co-host, AJ, all the way from Norway. And we're joined by another Brit, Jordan Peters. <laughs> How you doing, guys? Very good, mate. Very good. Um, I wanted to get you on for a while, Jordan. Um, for the sake of the... I suppose your thing is you're quite popular in America as well, aren't you now? You're quite well known. <laughs> People know who you are now. Yeah, you do. Well, that's a good thing. Uh, we're certainly trying our best. So, yeah. if the kind of the word is spreading, then I'm happy. Yeah. So, tell us about tell us why you're probably best known in the entire bodybuilding community. Um, I like to pick up heavy things and put them down. I suppose this is probably the, the <laughs> what first maybe caught some attention. Yeah. And then maybe once people explored a little further, that I maybe have some deeper thought processes behind what I'm trying to do as well. Mm-hmm. So maybe combining your typical meathead with a little bit more intelligence on top. Mm-hmm. That's what I try to I try to do. It's fascinating because when I walk around the body at Power Expos and yeah. at the show, you, you are the one with bigger lines than some of the IBB pros. <laughs> it's, ve- it's, ve- it's great to see. You're doing a great Thank job. You. Thank you. I appreciate that. I think... Um, I think people realize that we actually genuinely care about their progress. I'm not insinuating that other people don't, but that's very much higher on our agenda. And I'm trying to build a brand that people can trust. Mm. And that's now reflecting in the lines that we're getting because people trust us. They, they know that we care and we want to listen to them and we want to impart knowledge to help them. Jordan, before we get into all your projects, um, let's go back to I, well, the first time. I 
think yeah, well, certainly the first time I became really aware of you was the 2009 British finals. Do you yes. remember? <laughs> that was what this was the British finals that was won by overall by Zach Khan. Mm. Uh, he got his pro card there. The light heavyweights won by Sean Joseph Tavernier. And then we had this little freaky junior. Jordan <laughs> Jordan Peters. And then I, I mean you were you were kind of a you were you had a good physique. You weren't you weren't huge, but you took fifth that year, didn't you? I got third. Oh, third. Sorry. Mm, sorry, yes. I've done that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, my nerd skills. I need to up my nerd skills. Yeah, yeah he took... James, of course. James Holland said... Yeah, James Holland said that's right, yeah. Mm. And then he came back in 2012 and got second, didn't he, to Jack Stockwell? Yes. Yeah, sorry, I'm trying to, trying to regain my nerd status. My what, nerd what was status. his stage weight at that time? Yeah. I was 79 kilos. Yes. Oh, I think your leg weighs that now. <laughs> that's not much, yeah, no, no, <laughs> compared to now. Yeah, I guess... I, I had a very, very small frame as a, as, as a teenager. Um, my body never really wanted to get mm. to the size that I've bullied it up to now. Mm. Um, so like my first show, actually, earlier on in the year at the South Coast, which was five or six months earlier, I was 72 kilos. 72 kilos. 72 kilos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, so that year, obviously, that was that was the year because I did the report for a European magazine. Uh, it was I remember it was a side chess picture I've, I put in the magazine of you, and then I kind of didn't. We kind of I, I saw you at the shows or whatever, and then I think we were filmed at 2012 at Simon Fan's original Ultimate Fitness Gym. Do you remember? Yes, I do. With Josh Hill, I was yeah, you and Doctor Josh Hill, wasn't it? And mm. like I just couldn't believe that it was the same guy because he just in two three years, well three years, you'd just gone from this 79 kilo sort of junior to this like this this mass monster so like yeah i mean just tell us about tell us about that journey from when you were from when we were junior to to then mm. I, I think that like when i became introduced to bodybuilding it was slightly prior to what it is now in regards to social media and i was fascinated by the biggest and the strongest guys like they're there was no men's physique. There was no kind of mm. in between like there is now. Mm. So the only people that really like motivated me were the biggest and the strongest. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, okay, that is what I want to be. That is what I will be. Um, so from day one out of the gate, I was like, right, let's make this happen. Who were your favorites back then? Marcus Rule. Mm. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I can see, I can see that. I can yeah, see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I literally was like, I have to look like that. Like, I'm yeah. just, I will, I will do and eat whatever I have to eat to keep taking my body weight up. Yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, it was, it's been some interesting years trying to trying to achieve that. So what what, you, what height are you now, and what body weight you know? Uh, I'm five foot six, and at the moment, I, this year I haven't got heavy. Okay. Last year in my off season, I went up to three hundred and eight pounds. <laughs> three hundred and eight pounds at six. five six. <laughs> yes. And your body fat wasn't. How was that one? Was it uh, very high? That, was it okay? Was it? It's okay. I mean that that year I hit. The, uh, obviously last year I did a, the pro qualifier in Spain, and I was beat by Igor, who was just tremendous. Igor Iles. Igor Iles. Yes, but uh, I was obviously we were trying for pro cards. Igor beat me, and but I weighed in at two fifty two. Five foot six. Two fifty two. Well, think about the Dexter Jackson's five foot six, and, and he's like something. he's around two thirty. Yeah, so just imagine another like twenty five pounds. Yeah, but I think I probably have about twenty pounds of that in my midsection compared to Dexter. Yeah. <laughs> like in reality, <laughs> I, I, I would happily weigh in at two thirty two if I could take twenty pounds off of my midsection. But sadly, I can't. Three hundred and eight um, pounds in off season. Think, what are you currently now then? Right now, I'm like two seventy five to eighty, which is where I'm really comfy. Like this is this is perfect for me because I can actually do my day to day activities that I need yeah. to do. Like at three hundred, I couldn't do anything. I was just useless. Yeah, it can't be. I mean, I've spoke to guys when they hit that kind of body weight. I remember Dorian said he couldn't even do his own shoelaces up at two ninety. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's like, oh, don't be doing my laces up. You know, it was. Uh, it's it, it was. <laughs> it, it, yeah, is it really worth getting that big? Do you think? Honestly, no. I, I have the exact same amount of muscle mass I do now, yeah. but I'm just carrying. 25 pounds less body fat. How many calories did you have to eat, by the way, to get 310 in the off season? At that point, it was like 8,000. It was just stupid. 8,000 calories. That's literally constantly 8, eating. 8,000 calories. It was. And, and what comes with that is, as soon as you finish a meal, 
I used to think, okay, I get a two hour break before the next one starts. Oh and then I used to get anxiety kicking in when I knew the next meal was about to start. So you're not a big and eater really then? Sorry? You're not really a big eater uh, genetically <sighs> like normally or? I, I can get it done. Whatever you tell me to do, I will do. Yeah. So, that, so I, like, that's kind of my genetic strength, which is what's got me to the size I have, mm. is that I can just do it. Mm. Um, so I start the meal and I don't stop the meal until it's finished. Mm. So whether, and that, that's always been probably my biggest strength, but it, it, it certainly overwhelmed me last year at that point. And, and yeah, I was very glad to start coming down. What was, um, what was your blood work at like that, that body weight? Okay, it's interesting. So at whatever body weight I am, my blood pressure is never high. Okay. Uh, so, so which, is a, which is really beneficial in regards to kidney health and longevity there. Yeah. Um, it depends, obviously, how hard I'm pushing my drugs. Mm. Um, but my blood work never strays to the point where I'm concerned. Mm, okay. I'm very meticulous with my blood work. Like, like all of my athletes work alongside a company where they get their blood work free. It's something that I've set up for all of them. Okay. And, okay. Every, and every three months, you free visited, send a phlebotomist out to my athletes, and we run blood work all year round. Um, Jordan, we've just interviewed Matt Jensen, and he was talking about something very similar very that he's going to be running for all his athletes. Mm. Um, it's, it's, it's a must. I mean, like, the, the athletes that we sponsor, we want the best for them. Yeah. So, yeah, sure, we, like, I provide coaching. I provide, like, financial support. And really, unless we're looking after their health on top of it, they're never going to get to where they need to be. Mm. So, so that's a huge component of what we're trying to achieve as a brand and, and the way that we're sponsoring our athletes. So you're saying, we're talk, obviously, we're talk, we know what you're, you know, you're doing, uh, talking about brand and sponsorship. Do you want to tell us a bit about your company and what you do and what, you, what your role is right now? Sure. So it's, it's kind of changed as I've gone along. So initially, myself and my partner, Corin, who, who you're familiar with, um, started name. online coaching in 2012. Oh. Like we quickly realized that a year later that not necessarily everyone could afford online coaching, but everyone could afford five pounds to join a membership site. Mm, yeah. And we were the first to, to set up one of these membership sites at the time. And we set that up in August 2013. And that is, sorry, and that's trained by JP.com. The website. That's correct. Yes. And okay. we, we just pumped all of the information we could into that site for those that weren't really in the fortunate enough position to afford one-to-one -one coaching mm. but we wanted to make sure that for that five pounds they could effectively coach themselves right wow i believe that we did a job to a good enough extent that we are now at five thousand members wow. mm -hmm. and well. we are with the largest members site in the world um is it which UK then allows us to Sorry. Sorry, is the members from the UK most, or is it around the world? Like no, we, we have we have a large a large diversity of members, mm. and we then uh, the kind of the money that we, we we accrued from that then enabled us to bring on athletes that we were able to sponsor. Mm -hmm. We were then able to coach those athletes for free because obviously we, we were covered financially, which was a big strain off of them. Yeah, and then we started to put money into supplements because it got to the point where. I was so fussy with what I wanted to take hmm. that I then thought to myself, okay, I'm just going to make my own. Yeah. So, Jordan, one second. So the laptop keeps bouncing and it's, it's causing a little bit of noise. Can we, can we just, move the, just move it? Sorry, just, it's a bit distracting maybe for the, uh, for the viewers. I, I, that's actually me bouncing off the table. So yeah, I'll... yeah, yeah. You're just, you're just yeah. <laughs> flexing your quad probably. <laughs> um, talk about your supplement. You, you created your own supplement. Yeah. Yes. So our... Our supplement line is quite unique in the sense that you will not see other brands with as many patented pharmaceutical raws as us. Okay. So most companies are just using basic ingredients and they're, they're really looking at it from a business perspective to maximize their margins, which is, which is great if that's what you want to do. That's the polar opposite to what I wanted to do. Mm. I wanted to make supplements that myself and our sponsored athletes were going to use. Mm. So yes, our margins are small, but if you know what you're looking at when you look at our supplements, there's nothing else like it on the market. What's special now, about them? It's simply because we've, we've gone for clinical doses of pharmaceutical quality raws. Okay. And that combination makes us just unique. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we're expensive because of that. But because of the people that understand that they want to put quality into their body, we went straight into making good profit from month one. 
Right. So, so I, I never intended for that to be a move to kind of maximize profits, but because people have appreciated that we've done this from a perspective to actually help, yeah. it's actually done a lot better than I anticipated, which right. is which is really mm. Yeah. So let's talk about, go, sorry, a bit of a segue now. We're going to, why have you competed so little in terms, because you, you don't seem to compete very often. You've done very well. I mean, you won the Nabba Worlds, didn't you, in what, 2016? 2016. 16, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't like to show unless I've got something to show. Yeah. Basically, like I don't put progress pictures up very often. You never put them up. You put, I've, I've seen a readable bicep and it kind of blew everyone's minds. And then that's I mean, it for the year. <laughs> I think, what's, what's going on? <laughs> Come on, people want to see the mass. <laughs> I, again, I, I, please, I hope no one kind of, kind of takes this as a dig at them, but I, I build my physique for me. Right. Like I am obsessed with bodybuilding. I truly love it. Mm. And I don't feel the need to share what I'm doing until I have something to show you. Yeah. And then give me six months, I'll show you something again. And that's the way I look at it. Yeah. Um, because, because I know I'm never going to be the best bodybuilder. I'm never going to be an Olympian. So I'm just working in the background and then I'll pop up again and I'll compete and, and I'll do my, the best I can. And, and in the meantime, I'll just keep working in the background again. Yeah. So what's going on with you now contest wise? Because I know you did a couple of contests last year. You just missed out on your pro card. And then there was yes. a show that you were going to do, but you pulled out. And I was very disappointed because I really wanted to see, I wanted to see you step up. You know, I wanted to see you get your pro card. Especially it, wouldn't some... have won. it wouldn't have won, Giles. That look wouldn't have won. Why? Why though? Um, so Igor beat, uh, so feedback from the judges last year was that I won every rear pose and I won the most muscular. Right. However, yeah. however, I was fourth out of four in front double bicep, front lat spread, side tricep, ab and thigh. Oh. So, so what's going on then? What, why? Because of the way I've pushed my body up the way I have, yeah. it leaves me with a midsection that I struggle to control. Because that's, that's, that's can't the long that and short be problem. Fixed? Can't that be fixed? It, it's slowly getting better. I am working so hard. That's why this year I didn't go to 300 pounds again. I haven't forced yeah, the food. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've worked on keeping my midsection tight. Mm. But I got to two weeks out and I thought to myself, okay, this look will probably take a super heavies win. Yeah. And on reflecting on that, maybe it would have done. But hell no, would I have beat the middleweight or the lightweight, the light heavy that took the overall. Mm. They were just unbelievable. Their lines, their flow. So my best crack is going to be an amateur Olympia mm -hmm. taking a super heavyweight win mm -hmm. and then taking one of those three pro cards that's on offer in the overall. Okay, well, that's a very strategic way of looking at it. But what kind of, what kind of body weight are you competing at? Um, between 250 and 240, depending on how full I want to come in. Could I mean, I can easily manipulate my body weight up or down 10 pounds because if I was to keep certain compounds higher, I'm going to be fuller. Yeah. Could you not? Could you not sort of push it a bit further and try? Because I mean, like, let's talk about like, like say, Luke Rowley in 2016. I remember when he first went to Q8, he put 30 pounds on. He was obviously shoveling all the food and everything into him, and he put a lot of mass on, but the waistline blew out. So everyone was like, mm. right, Rowley's kind of written off now. He comes back in 2016 at the Body Power Pro. He actually comes in bigger. But he comes in with like a weight. I actually did, took photos and people were saying, no, that's photoshopped. I'm like, no, that's a photo on my phone. So it mm. can be done. It can be done. So I, I totally agree. But if the midsection's an issue, then sh it, there must be things you can do, either coming in lighter or, you know, and if it is a compound issue, then why not switch compounds? Again, Giles, I'm 100% in agreement with you, but it's just not something that can be done quickly. Right. Like, okay. I was hoping okay. I could do it by that Watford show, and I took a massive step forward yeah. to the point where I was like, okay, this definitely looks better than it ever has, yeah. but I'm so realistic in regards to knowing what can and can't win. Right. Like, I, I, it's, it's not even like I'm self-critical to the point where I worry, like, where I'm like, but I, I'm just realistic. I've coached for long enough now to know, right. okay, that can win or that won't win. Yeah. And I just didn't want to put myself up there with, with something that just I felt just was going to get smashed again. Yeah. Um, so I thought to myself, okay, head back down. Let's get back to work hmm. until I can get to, to what you're talking about there where I can fix this issue. Yeah. So you're still looking to turn pro then? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, yeah. I live and breathe this. <laughs> this is this like just because I'm not 
just because I'm not talking about it every day doesn't yeah. mean that this isn't the only thing that's on my mind. Like, yeah, uh, the first thing I get up in the morning and the last thing before bed, this is what I think about. You think about that more than your business or the same as much as your business? Just as much as the business. Just like, uh, AJ, I'm obsessed with progression. Mm. So it doesn't really matter where I, I focus that. As long as I'm progressing something in some way, then, then I'm happy. Mm. Um, it's just right now unfortunate that the business is somewhere I can I can focus that attention. Mm. Jordan, I've seen a bit of a sorry, just yeah, sorry. I've seen a bit of a change. I'm sure you have as well in bodybuilders' approach. Now, look at let's let's take the '90s, the bum bags, the stripy baggies. Everyone wants to get to 300 pounds. Everyone's coming down from a very very high body weight. Ronnie Coleman, Marcus Rule, they're all way over 300 pounds. Now we've got guys like Sean Roden who don't go up to 300 pounds and are coming from a, so basically guys aren't getting super heavy super you know like you're like 275 now you were th over 300 and something pounds last year have you not considered going from a different perspective like maybe coming from a striking distant body weight or even working up to something have you ever considered that maybe to or is this just the way you like to do it like, I think that this for me really, it, when we compare to last year, is a striking weight body, is a striking distance 20, body weight. 20 pounds, 20 pounds, now, 20 pounds. Yeah, 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 yeah. 30 yeah. pounds is a that's lot. No, that's of... nothing, yeah. Nothing. Yeah, like, like a 50 pound diet is very different to a 25 pound diet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so from here, I could confidently get into very good condition considering the calories that I'm on mm. and the fact that. My, the things that I've been using have been very conservative for the last few months. Okay. Okay. So, so I, I, my body's happy. I feel motivated. Hmm. So certainly, if I wanted to, I could do something. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think it's a better approach. I think in terms of once you've built enough muscle mass, yeah, you don't need to keep getting as heavy as that. Really. Yeah. It's 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 not going to be advantageous. And from a health perspective, it's it's certainly not advantageous. I'm happy to hear that the, the dosages have lowered because I think there's um, certainly with tragedies in the sport, I, I, I'm personally a believer that mega doses aren't needed because I've spoken to the, the very top Olympians and some of them are kind of almost confused by what some of maybe the amateurs or, you know, the, the lower rank pros are doing because I just, do you think, what's your opinion on the kind of high dose thing? Because you, you, you have done it. You've told me this before. You have done absolutely. it in the past. Absolutely, yes. I've pushed. I've probably pushed harder than anyone out there. Um, can you give us but, some numbers? Sorry? Can you give us some numbers on things? Can you go sure. To, so, like, yeah. I mean, like we're talking total milligrams a week of five to six grams of drugs. Five to six? What? <laughs> Seriously? Wow. Yeah, of, of course. Like, I've, Whoa. I, like I said, like, I'm so open about all the stuff yeah, that yeah, I've yeah. done. Mm. Um, and really, does that build more muscle mass? No. Doesn't. Because it impedes your weight, it impedes sorry, it impedes your ability to eat, yeah, it impedes yeah. your ability to train at your maximum potential, mm. and really, if we can't eat and we can't train, mm, it doesn't cool. matter how many drugs we're taking, we can't grow. I, I remember a guy once. This was a, a top European bodybuilder, and I was going to train with him one day, and he didn't turn up to the gym. And I said, so what? If, I, it took me a few days to get hold of him. I said, why didn't you? He says, oh, he says, well, I up my orals, and I won't even say the amount. It was like a ridiculous amount of orals in, in in terms of dosages and mm. i said uh, and he said yeah he says well he says i took so much he said it comp i couldn't eat for two or three days and i says well did you not think to maybe lower the dosage because if yeah. you can't eat you can't grow you can't meta you can't process muscle you can't synthesize protein into muscle tissue and he's like no no i kept the doses higher and it's this guy i mean he's never competed again he's, he's, he's he had very poor health but i just sometimes i i, I struck jordan i struggle with the mentality of this more is better, higher doses. It's like certain things, like you know that taking certain things will increase your body weight, but it won't necessarily increase your muscle mass. Absolutely. I think it's desperation, Giles. People are so desperate to make progress. And maybe when they don't see it come at the rate that others do, yeah. mm. it's, it's then going to push them to do things that really aren't smart. Mm. I mean, I've always made fairly informed decisions um, because of my goals. My goals are extreme. I want to be... Right. The biggest person at five foot six you've ever seen. I think it's kind of cool. Though. <laughs> I, I, I think AJ, AJ's feeling this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I've always been very clear about that, and I will push it yeah. as far as I can in regards to to my health, but all the while being okay. I'm happy still with my health because I, I'm paying attention to it. Yeah. Um, 
it's it's just a fine line and 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 it's 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 a very difficult conversation to have with people that are desperate to make progress yeah um, I, do you think there's always a market for people that want to hear they want someone to tell them yes that is the secret you just have you just have oh. to have the balls to do those mega mega doses because that's what works everyone wants the secret it's crazy like there was like obviously uh, last year was the first year that i took igf and i took Increlex. Okay. And I, I I put a video up on on my site, and mm. everyone just went crazy for it because they were like, "Okay, Inquilex must be the holy grail," mm. and, and and this is what everyone's looking for. Mm. And sure, it 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 will help step you forward, but is it going to be a game changer? No. Being consistent with your diet and your training is mm. is going to be the the be all and end all. And and this is the thing: the top bodybuilders. Well, are probably laughing at the doses that people take. Yeah, they are. They probably just think it's amusing that they do these things and they still look the way they do in yeah. comparison to, mm. to the way they're doing things and the way they look. I mean, I imagine someone like Dexter probably just thinks it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like... Um, but it's just some people's mentality you'll never be able to change, sadly. I think the one thing that I was very pleased about when I've seen past interviews is because... Straight away, when someone, when people in the industry, fans, followers, will look at someone like yourself, and maybe they haven't heard you speak and they haven't watched your interviews, they make an instant judgment. Sure. You're huge, you're thick, you know, you, you know about chemicals and stuff like that. So I, th I think it's, um, I forgot my question there. I don't know. <laughs> Completely forgot my question. <laughs> Completely lost my question there, trailer thought there. Uh, oh no, sorry, yeah, it was talking about, um, it was an interview, and it was about what would you recommend for a first time cycle? Sure. And, so, and I, like, I was very glad to hear that it was very, very moderate, and I think people didn't expect it. Yeah, can, we, can, we, can we get that? Because I don't, haven't heard it for people at home. Can yeah. we get a first sight for, for a beginner? What would, you, what so, would you recommend if his genetics is not top notch? Um, so, like, hypothetically, hypothetically, if I was to go back to take my first cycle again, yeah. I'd run 300 milligrams of testosterone a week, mm -hmm. and that would be everything that I would run. It wouldn't be any more, any less. And I would try to maximize the progress I can from that dose as much as possible. And then I would reflect on what I did from it. And then I would move forward and adjust accordingly. Yeah. So then basically for my, for my second cycle, I would then probably only run 350 to 375 milligrams of tests. Or if I thought, actually, I wasn't as efficient as I could have been with my training and diet, I'm going to run 300 again and really hone my training and diet in even harder. Yeah. Mm. See, I keep eking out from the least amount possible. Mm. Do you think people jump on gear too soon? Because I hear, you know, like these, some of these, some of these other classes, like classic and men's physique and guys literally from the start, from the first day they, they go to the gym, they want to be turning pro in a year. So they don't want to wait two, three, four years before they even start taking something and they jump straight on. What do you think of the pitfalls of that? Uh, I, I, I think that we always want to try to achieve at least a baseline with our physiques naturally yeah. mm. um, to gain some kind of consistency with our training to kind of understand what it takes in regards to being organized with your nutrition once you have those things in place mm -hmm. then of course by all means start to add things in like i started training when i was 12 yeah, well to hear, yeah. and then by the time i was 16 I, I i was i already had a fairly decent physique Wow. And then obviously I started t taking bits when I was 18. Um, and between I, I, was, the I was 18. I was, I was 17, actually. <laughs> and, like, I, there's no way. I, so by 18, I had six years of training yeah, yeah. under my belt. And the, the two years of really, really serious training and eating from the age of 16 to 18. Um, what were your first cycle and how much did you gain when you were 18? What, it was what, 18? Mm. What, what, what were the yeah. first thing? Yeah. So the very first thing that I used at the time was, was 500 milligrams of test, okay. which still wasn't crazy, but just knowing what I know now, I would have held that cycle back until maybe two years down the line. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I know for, for a fact that I, I would have easily made the same progress as I did on 500 if I had just taken 300. Mm. I mean, you really can only build muscle at a certain rate. Mm. And your, your, your initial responses to increased anabolics is, is unbelievable. Yeah. Mm. Uh, What's, what's the minimum age you think people should take anything? But what did you get from it, though? What gains Sorry. did you make? Um, it's hard to tell exactly, though. But I was very, very light. Very light. I, I think when I was 16, 17, I was knocking around 65 kilos, 66 kilos at the time. Mm 
um, I, I was I was very light, but I was I was very very fit because I was, I was playing rugby at the time. Yeah, and I, I only took my first cycle once I stopped playing rugby. Mm. Um, I I had a good base of strength, but maybe after my first cycle, I'd put. 40 50 kilos on all of my main lifts in in, in a 12 14 week period mm. um and i i can't remember the, how much i took my body weight up but i, I remember getting very strong mm. uh, as, as an 18 year old i was very very strong i filmed you training with josh hill and i was surprised at the poundages you were using they were because you you're someone that be- I, you believe in pro- constant progressive overload don't you um, my viewpoints have changed. Okay, because I, th- um, I've, I I remember you telling me this. And I was thinking I've had an argument with someone, uh, people on forums before, and they were saying you can constantly progressively overload. And I said no, but there becomes a point when form starts to suffer, and you maybe risk injuries, and you can't literally get any stronger. You know, you can't if you get to six hundred pound deadlifts. You, you know, you can't always go from a hundred to six hundred. You can't go to six hundred to thousand. It's not going to keep. It's not sustainable. Sure. Sure. So initially, I did believe that. Um, right. Because my perspective was okay, so I'm not as strong as Eddie Hall, so I'm going to keep going until I am. Mm, okay. That was kind of my perspective. But then what I realized was that external stimulus, so weight on the bar, doesn't always equate to internal stimulus, i.e., muscle recruitment. Yeah. And then it's about finding a happy medium between the two. Mm. So really, we want to always be increasing our internal stimulus. Mm-hmm. Does that mean more weight on the bar? Probably at some point, yes. But we need to be constantly addressing, is our form good enough to allow that external stimulus to increase internal stimulus? Yeah. And that's probably been one of the biggest turning points in regards to the way I view training. Mm. So, yes, you do need to be getting stronger, but you have to be so accurate in the way that you go about that. Yeah. So how do you train now then? Very much the same as I did before. Yeah. But, but, is, it, but is it plateaued by... in terms of poundages? Yes, right. because now... I am not thinking, let's move this weight from A to B. Yeah. I am now thinking, let's contract my muscles as hard as I can against this weight. Yeah. And that's what's allowed me to keep getting bigger because I had to take a step back with my loading at some point mm. because it was much harder to just contract muscles. But then after a period of time, I've got back to as strong as I was, but with perfect contractions. And then that has then just allowed me to, to, to keep getting stronger. What sort of poundages do you shift? Um, it depends on the lift because... Certain things now do give me injury risks, yeah. so I just don't do them. So, like, the heavy dumbbell pressing, I don't really do as much because I was up to doing, like, the 210, 215-pound dumbbells mm. for, for pressing. And then I had to do those second exercises for pressing, in as for, well. For, for chest press, 200 pounds? Yeah. 215 yeah. pounds? <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, but I, I, I had to do those second exercises. you have 200 pounds? they make dumbbells that big? <laughs> um, I actually had some custom made. Ah, there you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, yeah. they're still in strength asylum. Oh wow. Um, yeah, so I think every now and again Eddie gets them up, but he doesn't really mess around with dumbbells that are heavy. That's, he does that's, all of his stuff on the barbell. Sorry, that's Eddie Hall, the world's strongest man. Oh, the world's Two times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Deadlift yeah, of five hundred yeah, yeah. kilo, eleven hundred pounds. You train please, with him sometimes. Please, please don't make that seem like I'm inferring that I'm anything as strong as him. Oh, yes, you did say that. You did, did say, say that. Say you did, you did. <laughs> that is absolutely not why I'm doing that. Uh, Jordan, have you ever uh, trained legs with James Hollinshead? Uh, James and I have trained quite a few times, yes. So what's a leg session like? Because we've, we've, we've seen videos of him squatting, was it seven plates for eight reps? Oh, I mean, like, not shitty half reps. Oof. We're talking proper full reps. Oh. What is... I, I, I can only imagine... Tell us, take us through and, one of those leg workouts. And his back training is also... Oh, you've trained back with oh, him. Oh, uh, his back training AJ, is amazing. AJ trained with oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, James yeah. Hollandshead in Oslo on Christmas Day. Sure. <laughs> so tell us, yeah, tell us a leg workout so, with James Hollandshead. Yeah, What's that like? Yeah. So no one can hang with James in terms of squatting. Right. No one. Okay. There, I imagine they're really aren't very many IFBB pros in the world that can hang with James as as a squatter. He's just on a different level. When we train legs, typically we focus more on hack squats and leg presses. Okay. Um, Is that your one? Do do you say, hey, I don't fancy doing squats today, uh, James? For me, squats don't build my legs. Like, just in terms of the mechanics of the lift, I shift a lot of it onto my glutes and my lower back. Right. So it's it's just not a useful... Like, I I really love squatting, but I'll spend... 40, 50 minutes squatting, and I'm like, right, I actually need to train my legs now yeah. because I've been moving weight. So oh, we, we, I, I we, like we, hack, we hack squat and we leg press. Um, 
The last time we did it at King's, we had to find ways to put more weight balanced on top of the leg press. Oh, <laughs> no! Which was, which was pretty interesting because we had to have people holding weights on top of it. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Is this on your uh, uh, website, by the way? This yeah, 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 yeah. Check them out. Check them out. Join up and uh, check these videos out because they are something special. Yeah, they are. Yeah. They're, they're interesting sessions always with James. We have good fun. Do you, do you know what I find interesting, though? You know, like, they always say that, like, I'm tall and I actually like squats, but six foot. But you're saying you're five foot six and you don't find squats build your legs. And then you've got Jamie the Giant, who's six foot five, who loves squats for legs. Sure. That, sure. That, doesn't, that doesn't actually, that's the complete opposite of what has always been kind of tradition, really. Um, I don't necessarily think it's, it's much to do with limb length in regards to muscle recruitment. Okay. Um, so... In terms of strength, yes, I, because I'm a very, very strong squatter mm. because I'm short and it enables me to, to like bias the load favorably in terms of mechanics. Yeah. But let's look at what we're trying to achieve when it comes to muscle recruitment. Muscle recruitment isn't always about maximizing your mechanics. Right. So, so if you are an incredibly efficient squatter, mm. that might not necessarily mean that you load your quads. It just means that you can use all of the musculature in sync to move the weight. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And that's what I'm good at. I can use everything. So I'm like, I get a little bit of back, a little bit of glute, a little bit of hamstring, a little bit of quad, but it doesn't really overly nail any one muscle like I would do on a hack squat. Yeah. Where I get okay. a hack squat and my quads will just be crazy pumped, mm. and I know that I've recruited every aspect of my quad. Mm. Um, so move, movement mechanics and muscle recruitment are very different things. Right. In terms of mass building, give me your favorite exercise for each body part. Quick. <laughs> um, so for legs, it would be a hack squat. Okay. Um, again, simply because you don't have to think. You just, you just get on it and you do. Yeah. Um, whereas with a back squat, there really is, ha there really has to be a lot of thought process there yeah. to make sure you're trying to get what you're trying to train from it. Hack squat, it's a foolproof leg builder. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the same with the leg press, really. Um, so it'd be between the two of those. What rep range, by the way, do you prefer? I, I work in all rep ranges. Um, so I, again, I will do five rep work and I'll do 20 rep work. Oh, okay. There won't be any any one rep range that I like to work in. I try to get strong Mix it up. At, at everything. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Sure. So, uh, so that would be my quad builder. My hamstring would be any hamstring curl variation. Yeah. Um, favorite glute exercise would be a glute bridge, like a, a barbell hip thrust type movement. Yeah. Uh, my favorite lat exercise would be uh, an under grip pull down, but. Probably on the hammer strength machine, something that's slightly in front of you, so okay. you can drive the elbow down. Okay. Your favorite exercise for back building? Lat. For lat lats. building. Yeah. Really? Lat specifically, yes. Okay, that was yeah, because that was um, a bit of a Dorian Yates one, wasn't it? When he was training with Mike Mentor, that was his underhand. That was his favorite that exercise. Exact, that exact movement. That yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bo is bolt one. upright. Bolt upright. Yes, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, yeah, back arch. Yeah. Um, uh, because yeah, like that that can't be disputed in terms of mechanics, to be honest. Because that shocked. is the exact of the lat. Sorry, go on, carry on. This is interesting. Very interesting. In terms of upper back, yeah. Anything with a chest support. Okay. So okay. anything okay. that we brace against hammer and just row. perfectly retract our scapula. Okay. Oh, like oh, a, like oh. a one arm hammer row or. I, I don't really. I prefer. I prefer it two arms. Okay. Um, because if we're doing a single arm, again, it's quite hard to concentrate on just hitting the, the upper back. Because if you start to rotate, the lat yeah. will start to come into movement more so. Okay. Whereas okay. if it's two arms at the same time, it kind of keeps you locked into a position where it's just perfect scapular retraction. Okay. Um, so like a, a chest supported T-bar, for example, would be yeah. one of my yeah. favorites there. Um, in terms of side delts, I don't like dumbbell laterals anymore. Wow. Uh, I don't like that. I've heard this before. I've heard this before. Yeah. Sure. So if we think in terms of like the way a dumbbell elicits its resistance, when, the, when our arm is straight down, the force is really, really low. And when we start to move, it's still really, really low. And it's at this point when our arm is perpendicular to the ground, the resistance is crazy high. Mm -hmm. So the variation in strength curve means that we typically will pick a weight that we can move from here to here, but then to get it all the way to
into the contracted phase, people will be throwing dumbbells around all over the place. So there's no tension. Which no tension. Just horrendous fall. Yeah, 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 yeah. And exactly, you're not keeping perfect tension. So for me, it'll be a side raise machine, mm -hmm. or, or even using a, a, a cable machine. Um, yeah. Again, I know Dorian was a big Dorian, fan. Dorian, yeah, 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 the yeah. The cable one behind. Do you do exactly. behind? Do you do like, behind the body or, or in front? Yeah, either or. Yeah, Doesn't yeah. Matter. Either or. I, the only thing that I do different to Dorian is that I don't grip the handle. I put a wrist cuff on. Okay. So I don't have to think about gripping like a hook, with my like hand. Like a hook, you mean? Perfect, exactly. So yeah, all I'm thinking yeah, now yeah, yeah. is just contracting my side delt. Mm. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Dorian had it pretty well. Obviously, he had it pretty right with everything. But <laughs> in terms of, he did right. in terms of actually his understanding of biomechanics with his exercise selection, mm. you can't fault anything that Dorian did. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he didn't squat either. He favoured the hack and the leg press. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay, biceps Ca carry on, now. Yeah, carry, carry on. on. Biceps. Um, Anything, again, that we can brace our arm against. So anything that means that, that we don't have. So, a, again, Dorian favored the, the single arm curl with his arm braced against the pad. Yeah. Um, I prefer actually seated, and I will sit or lean against maybe like a Smith machine mm -hmm. so I can brace my arm into the machine, the Smith behind me, the bar, and then just curl up without my upper arm leaving what I'm bracing against. Yeah. So then at any given moment, the bicep is all that's working. This is complete opposite of what I was expecting to hear, actually. Let it keep on. Sorry, Tell sorry, I keep interrupting. Sorry, <laughs> carry so, on. So, um, triceps, uh, the dip, to be honest. Okay. Um, I, I, think, I think that the dip is, is going to allow us to overload the muscle. It puts a stretch on all three heads of the tricep. If you get very strong at dipping with immaculate form, you're going to have great arms. It's, it's just very rare to see a very efficient dipper with small arms. So you do that for triceps more than chest? Um, I will dip in both sessions, okay. just because of the crossover between the two. Okay. Um, I'll concentrate different in terms of where I put the stretch. So in a chest session, I'll take the range through its fullest range and I'll make sure I feel a stretch with my chest. Yeah. With a, an arm session or if I'm trying to train the tricep, I'll try to, to pause more so and keep my elbows slightly more tucked and make sure I'm driving through the tricep. Yeah. Mm. So just the execution aspects will change slightly. Yeah. But that's a really useful movement to train both the chest and the triceps. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Are we, have we got so, any body parts left? <laughs> chest. What are we missing? Chest and calves. Chest, neck, chest, calves. <laughs> Ears. Um, so chest. Anything that we can bring the humerus across the body to fully shorten the chest. So the machines, so, so a, a, bar, a barbell for me is pretty inefficient. Like I love to incline barbell press. That was a movement I got really, really strong at, yeah, yeah. but it never really reflected in more chest growth. Okay. So I think really a dumbbell press is going to be my favorite movement. But incline. the only reason I don't do them anymore is because they are a pain in the ass, warming up well, and getting some 200 pounds on it. Uh, <laughs> I, I have no idea how Luke can still be bothered to do them. Yeah, yeah, Luke Sando. Yeah, he just two, he, I saw a video today, he was doing 200 pound dumbbells and he was like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, he gets them up himself, he gets them up himself. Yeah, I know, I know. Me, me, Luke's clearly a better man than me because I need someone to pass them up to them. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm feeling that. So, so I'll, I'll then maybe use any of the hammer strength variation machines okay. yeah i can i can comfortably load up and then just trap my chest really hard against yeah okay calves don't ask me i have the worst calves ever uh, uh I, I don't think that's true i well, don't think that's true um but oh, for, for the calf anything that you where you can just create a great stretch yeah yeah um really the, the emphasizing the stretch aspect on the calf is yeah. Like, uh, we'll take what Pekulski likes to do for calves, because he probably has some of the best, yeah. is that he'll spend a period of time in the stretch position. So it might be like a five-second eccentric, and yeah. then maybe five seconds in the stretch position <laughs> before then coming back out. Ow. So that, so that I, know, I know Ben did that on the toe press for a long period of time, which Bill hit the calves he had has still okay okay do you discuss with other trainers like charles glass and those type of have you ever discussed like philosophies with um, other... I, I, haven't had, I haven't had the privilege to discuss with charles mm -hmm. obviously i would love to um would joe bennett i would say is someone that i love to talk about training with mm. um so he's on instagram as the hypertrophy coach i'm sure oh, you guys yeah, have yeah, yeah yeah i know him yeah, yeah, yeah he trains with luke sandow sometimes yes yeah, um yeah. joe joe i believe is 
and, and Ben as well. Ben has had a huge influence on my Absolutely. training. Yeah. And ben and I spent a long time discussing training. Well, he's helped Derek Lunsford, doesn't he, with his training? And it, I, I see the way that um, with, since he's moved to is it M, what's the name of the gym? MK40 or is it down in Florida? Yeah, and my thought, yeah, yeah, where he's, yeah, a lot of um, kind of biomechanics and the way that sure. you know, the movements are done, a lot of mixing of different types sure. of uh, principles. So initially, Joe was one of Ben's trainers. Ah, okay. okay. Uh, and then, then the third guy as well is, is, is Kasim, who was also one of Ben's trainers. Yeah. And um, so at one time, they had all three of those under one roof. And wow. that was when I was over there spending time with them. And that learning environment was yeah. absolutely unbelievable yeah, all three of them have sadly kind of parted ways and now set up their own thing but yeah uh, th those are probably i would say in my opinion the three smartest individuals when it comes to their knowledge of training and biomechanics okay, okay. did you go to the british grand prix on sunday uh we were the lead sponsors of the british grand prix <laughs> I, that's why i'm asking <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think of the show then i absolutely loved it yeah. um i I was in awe, if I'm honest. Yeah. I, 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 I walked away from that as well, thinking to myself, I just wish that I could be up there too. That's like that's <laughs> what I thought. I saw it and was like, wow. Yeah. Um, what shocked you the most positively? Sorry, say again? What surprised you the most? Um, I wouldn't stage? say surprised, no. um, because I, I, obviously I think all of those guys have that in them. Um, I would say that Samson impressed me incredibly. The new size he got was just fantastic. Yeah. If he was a touch crisper, yeah. I think that could have been very, very interesting. In what way? In that he may have pushed Nathan even harder than he already did. Would he have beat Nathan, though? Uh, I don't think I was close enough to the stage right. to call that. Because it's fair, because... It's, fair, it's fair enough saying, oh, well, if he'd been crisper, but I mean... Would he, would he, he could, do you think he would have beaten him? If he'd, I, was that possible? So when, when I walked on and I handed the checks, yeah. up close, Nathan's skin tone and his dryness was absolutely incredible. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I just, yeah, yeah. as I was walking towards him, I scanned him up and down and I couldn't believe the way the side of his leg and his glute looked just standing there. Yeah. And no one else on the stage looked like that. Yeah. Um, so, so I can't imagine how that would have looked up close posing. <laughs> and he looks so healthy too, Nathan. He looks yeah, so fresh. Yeah, he looks great. He looks, great. He looks so great. And he's had all these injuries and eye injuries. And he's, and he's he just came in looking fresh and ripped and yeah, crazy. I, I, I think he was unbelievable. So who do, you, who do you sponsor? Which athletes do you have currently? Um, so in terms of pros, uh, James Hollingshead would probably be the pro that, that you guys are most familiar with. Yeah. And then... My partner, Corinne, as well. Obviously, mm -hmm. I, she's not a sponsor, but she, she runs Trained by JP alongside me. Yep. Um, she's a pro, and she'll be competing again in Portugal. Portugal yeah. um, and then... Um, uh, sorry, one second. Yeah. I think that condition she had when she did the Nabi Universe, I think that's some of the most shocking condition I've ever seen on a woman. That was in unbelievable. Those photos from that Nabi Universe when she won it a few years ago was absolutely incredible. She didn't win, sadly. Uh, the Brazilian girls that were a lot bigger and softer uh, oh, placed no. higher. But I wasn't at that show, but I saw the pictures. This is female yeah. physique, correct? Yeah. No, this was trained figure. It's kind of very similar to women's physique okay. in the pro league. Yeah, uh, yeah. Her, her conditioning then was <laughs> unbelievable. But, but the thing is, to, to hit that, she sucked her body down. Right. So, so, so light. She was about... 120 pounds yeah and then last year in romania where her condition was tremendous but she was 145 pounds wow so kind of the amount that she obviously she's built a lot more tissue since then but mm. uh, getting down to that level of conditioning took too much away from her right okay uh, i don't think that that level of conditioning would and that look would go down well on a, on a women's physique stage at the moment either okay so um, it's it's too stringy and, and just too conditioned yeah but, um, but really cool to look at. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cool. I love it. Yeah. So go back to more of your uh, your sponsored athletes. Yes. Um, then we sponsored two young British pros, uh, Kuba Challen mm -hmm. and then Meg Sylvester. Mm -hmm. And then we have just taken on Jamie Joe Hole as well. Oh, Jamie yes. the Giant, yeah. New pro. And then we sponsor four Austrian athletes. Um, so one of them has just taken his pro card, Kevin Stutz. Mm -hmm. And he won... He's in Prague. He won classic physique. Oh, wow. 
and he he's certainly an interesting guy in the sense that he's the hardest working guy I have ever met. Oh, really? So, so he has he has a Roman Fritz mentality to him. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so he is wired up in the same way, yeah. in the sense that, that that he's not really all there. <laughs> <laughs> just relentless <laughs> how's the progress with jamie the giant going because that's one of my favorite bodybuilders fantastic i i i coached jamie for a period before um so we're quite familiar with each other and, mm. and we work very well together so we're we're doing good things uh good. when we do get to the stage next year i'm really excited that we can bring him forward a lot how mm. many pounds do you think he's going to compete at at that uh, at that height what, what okay. are you looking at it's, it's, it's really hard to say because with someone as big as that, you can fluctuate their weight up and down so much. Yeah, yeah. Like, like when you take Ronnie, for example, like he came in some years, was it 20 pounds heavier or lighter than other years? There was yes. a 40 pound difference within a year or two. We're like 245 sure. one year and then the next year comes at 285. Sure. So you, you can <laughs> manipulate body weight very easily if you yeah. want. To. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but in terms of lead muscle mass, I, I certainly would expect him to step forward another seven to ten pounds from this year to next if we get it right. Do you do you think you can bring him on stage shredded at three hundred? He has a great work capacity, and I believe that mentally he's capable of that. Because, because uh, sorry, I've I've seen him when he did the March Two Bros Pro. He was two ninety six there. We've seen him. I think he turned pro at two eighty five. Bear in mind the guy's six foot five. You know, fantastic structure. Uh, 285 I think just I think for the sake of it's a talking point the fact that maybe we could see him at 300 pounds shredded but he has to to make an impact that's what I'm saying yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying well, I would love to see it and I think it'd be a good talking point for him I just wonder if it's achievable I, I, I believe so if we take our time and we don't overwhelm him yeah. in regards to his digestion and his ability to handle food because that's the biggest hurdle that we have to overcome is that he needs a lot of food yeah, and then yeah. his, his appetite and his digest, digestion doesn't quite match his needs right. so that's what we're always going to be up against it's just getting enough in him to keep taking his body weight up the thing is with him he's got he has got such a beautiful waistline he's got really he's he's kind yeah. of a super heavyweight with aesthetics so Absolutely. even yeah. though we'd love to get him for 300 pounds to put the mass on him, you've got to retain those aesthetics. Like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. imagine him, that, I mean, that front lat spread is an absolute, I mean, that, Phil Heath actually commented when I posted a picture on my Instagram and he said, oh, wow, he says, this is proof that tall guys can have aesthetics. He reminds me of Tony Freeman or Quincy Taylor. Mm. That's what he said on my Instagram. Like, genuinely, this is a discussion that Jamie and I have had, yeah. and everything we're doing in regards to our compounds and the rate that we're moving up yeah. is so patient. Yeah, so we certainly are going to protect what he has because the moment that we lose those things, that's it. He will not be a competitive bro. Yeah. So he needs to keep those to be competitive. Um, so if, so we'll, we will add more muscle and we will keep those. And I think it will be very interesting. Hmm. Before we go, we want to have your top six Mr. Olympia predictions <laughs> in the open class. Give it. <laughs> um, I would love to see Brandon Curry win. Hmm. Um, Do you think he can? I'm, I'm Do you just, think he can? I'm a big Brandon Curry fan. Um, mm -hmm. I think he's a great guy, um, really humble, really polite. Yeah. And that, that it's strange when you say those things. Like, what does what kind of difference does that make as a competitor? But like, I feel like it does. Like, I I buy into Brandon Curry because I know he's a nice guy. Yeah. Um, so that coupled with his physique, it makes me want to support him. Mm, yeah. Um, so I would I would love to see him win. Whether that will unfold. We'll see. I think that Phil will be incredibly dangerous this year. Um, I think a pissed off Phil. I mean, it's mm. it's gonna be unbelievable. Who else? Uh, Come on, who else? Uh, Bonac, of course. Um, Where he'll be in the mix. Uh, I, so I I can't really place the top four. Okay. Um, I don't know. I don't know where uh, uh, again where where Roden. But amongst those four. I don't know who will win of those. So you think e any one of those? For, so you're thinking either Ro Roden? Did you say? Did you say Roley? I didn't say Roley. Oh, no, okay. I, I, I don't believe he's in that top four. Oh right, okay, oh, that's interesting. Okay. So who have we got? Roden, Brandon Curry, Bonac. Who's the other? Who's the fourth? Yeah, it's Phil, but he has. Oh, sorry, Aaron. Phil. Yeah. For, of course, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I, I think on their day this year, any of those are capable. Going over to Nathan and Luke. Where do you huh. think they will fit this year? <laughs> he's smiling. He's smiling. <laughs> Wonder why he's smiling. <laughs> both, both of them surely will be 100% top 10. Yeah. There's no doubt in my mind. Uh -huh. 
again, I, I think that, that both of them are capable of top six, but mm. they, they both have to be the very best versions of themselves this year to make that happen. Do you think this rivalry between them is going to bring out the best in them? Um, it's hard to say. Why? It's hard to say. Why? Um, I sometimes think that those, those things can can allow you to overthink. Right. And I think as a bodybuilder, the least stress that you're putting on yourself is, is going to be better. Oh. Like... I don't think either of those guys need additional motivation to work at their maximum. And, yeah, but to be fair, I don't think Nate and Diasha is thinking about Luke for this Olympia. Okay. I don't think he's... Do you really think so? Because he's been battling for top six and seven and eight place. Yeah, yeah. Luke first needs to get to the Olympia, and then he needs to place in the top ten for the first time. Mm -hmm. Do you really I, think... I have a lot of faith in Luke. Luke's a good friend of mine. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think Nathan is... Uh... Oh, see, you, you don't mean Nathan's concerned because he's more looking... Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's more yeah, thinking yeah, like yeah. Dexter well, and Bonac, maybe. But Luke will definitely be in the top 10 this Olympia. Yeah, yeah I, I, I believe so. I believe so. Yeah. I mean, I, w I was there at the Arnold Classic when he took oh. third, and it was just like... it was To me, it was probably... It's been one of the most exciting highlights of... Not just yeah. for British bodybuilding, but for bodybuilding, because, you know, like, when he was called out with Cedric, it was... As a British bodybuilding fan, it was so exciting to see Nathan, who, um, sorry, Luke, who's kind of, he's, you know, he's not won a pro show yet. And then to see him up there in that first call out and he kind of looked like that and, you know, like called out just by himself with Cedric. Oh. It was... How did that make you feel? Yeah, how did it make you how feel? How did that make you feel when Luke got... Because we thought he'd get third. Yeah, yeah. We, we weren't sure if the judges would allow it to happen. I said you deserve top five, but I don't think you're going to get So what top did you five. think when he got the third place? What were you thinking? What were you feeling? I, I, I think that in that moment, I thought to myself, he must just be in disbelief right now. He was. Like, I, he's probably thinking to himself, am I going to wake up any moment now? Am I dreaming here? Yeah. Do, you, do you know what he did? What, just, sorry. Go on. Go on. Just an incredible moment. I was just... It was... Amazing to see. Um, yeah, I was so, so, so happy for him. Actually, as soon as he got his check, he came to the front of the stage at the end and he said, Charles, he says, just, just tell me that says third on there. He said, please, <laughs> just tell me. He says, I need someone to confirm it for me. He says, I can't quite believe it, you know? Well, he's working so hard. Yeah. I know everyone is, but I mean, he's, he's had some setbacks and, he, and a lot of the time, People may have written him off or they haven't really believed in his, his ability to work hard. Mm. But it feels now that he's working with Chris and, and it's yeah. clicking well for him. Mm -hmm. um, he seems to be stepping forward at just a brilliant rate. Like I, even just seeing him in the flesh at the weekend, mm -hmm. I was just looking at him and I was just like, wow. <laughs> he's saying, wow. And, that, and that's Jordan who's looking at Luke. He's like, he's a monster himself. Absolutely amazing. I, 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 I must have just stared at him for about a minute. I just, I, I just thought to myself, every single one of his muscles was so round and full and nicely proportioned. And yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's exciting for him. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, also, um, I, w I would like to say the day this episode goes out, you're doing something quite special, aren't you? Um, I am. Do you want to talk about, just, I, I, do you want to talk about it or do you want to talk about it? Am I allowed to talk about it? You're allowed to talk about it. Yeah, but don't say where it is because we don't want to be, uh, we don't okay. want to Buses full of people turning up, mobbing us. Sure. So uh, I'm training with uh, The Gift, Mr. Yeah. Phil Heath, yeah. um, which I, I am really, really excited about. Secret location. Yeah. Um, yeah. So <laughs> we, we won't disclose that, but that will be, yeah. uh, be an interesting session. Yeah. And to see that, you got to join where? Yeah. Five pounds. Uh, Trainbyjp.com. That's, yeah. where the, that's where the video will go up. And five we'll pounds about. is really nothing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, literally, I mean, I remember when uh, JP started this uh, this website, and I mean, five pound. I mean, you, you've built up such a, a an amazing sort of uh, membership base, isn't it? Uh, of what you, I, I mean, the amount of I've always I've heard nothing but good things about your website. But the cost hasn't gone up at all yeah. in six years. Oh no, no. Five Sadly, the cost, the cost has gone up now. Okay, okay. Now. Now we're at six ninety nine. That's disgraceful. Oh, no. <laughs> so if you want to find out how to get really big, you want to see videos of uh, JP training with Phil Heath and you know and like all these guys and it, and also it's really high quality video video content, isn't it? It's really well filmed it is, and yes. very very high standards. We only use we only use really really good videographers. 
um, so again, the, the kind of the money that we're making from that, we aren't just thinking to ourselves, okay, let's put that straight in our pockets. Yeah, we're then we're then using the best videographers we can. Mm. Like my, my web team is incredible, um, so we're we're really really happy with what we're able to put out to the members because yeah. we want this to keep growing, and we know that unless we are constantly giving everything we can then we're not going to keep growing in, in the rate that we hope to. Yeah. Do you know, do you know what, JP, in terms of we had um, Nathan on uh, recently um, and to see that British bodybuilding is in such a good place. We've had Luke Sando on, you know, got James Holland's head. He was making top threes at shows. Samson now, you know, British bodybuilding is in such a good place. And with people like yourself, you know, you're reaching worldwide. You're educating people on how to train and how to eat properly, how to protocol responsibly and sensibly it's a really um i think it's really and of course we've got guys like flex lewis and it's really good to have i think we've got a really good core of key people in the uk that are really making waves internationally it, you know mm, isn't that yeah. fair to say you know it's great it's great I, I i totally agree i think that that all of those names that you've mentioned um everyone is being a true professional exactly I would say. yeah 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 they, they, they every, everything that they are doing they are doing it with purpose and and with meaning and and they they believe in what they're trying to do and yeah. and that's certainly reflecting at the moment and it's it's a lovely time to be involved with everything right now yeah, it's a fantastic buzz about british bodybuilding and you're you you know you, you and corinne are very much part of that uh, jordan so aj any final questions no I, we learned a lot it's uh, been fascinating talking to you and we wish good luck to your girlfriend in portugal that's the most important thing right now isn't it <laughs> thank you thank you yeah yeah she she did very very well last year in romania yeah. um and she's a few pounds heavier and she'll be a few pounds more conditioned again so it's it's going to be interesting she's going to look very good and we've got nathan and nathan diasha and samson dowder in portugal in the open ah that will be interesting yeah. so you're gonna have a good trip mate you got, I think you've got a feeling you guys are gonna have good fun on that trip it will be very good. <laughs> All right, JP. Uh, thank you so much for coming you. on. And uh, yeah, I'll, uh, well, I'll see you next Monday. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you, Jordan. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, oh, did you enjoy that? Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, so uh, <laughs> I wish you had his accent. What accent? He, like, he speaks. I've got a very uh, sexy accent. No, it's so, you know, it's like, it's, it's What's po wrong? Is it posh or what do you call it? What's Chris? wrong with my accent? It's posh. It's posh. It's fancy. So I thought I was posh. He's way more posh than the way he speaks. But you look more posh. Of ah, okay. Thank so you. that's. Okay, okay. <laughs> right. I'm happy now. Yeah, yeah. JP, man. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, that's. Yeah, really. Very interesting guy. He's very. He's successful. He's. Um, yeah, speaks from the heart. Laura, you know, he speaks very responsible. 208 pounds, 5'6". What? It's incredible. Yeah, incredible. And I've seen him train. Honestly, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I mean, he really, he is like... He's a fascinating man. Yeah, very intense. Very intense guy. In a good way. Trains. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Yeah, fantastic. Mm. You really just listen to him. You want to learn, you know. You yeah, want to yeah. pick his brain. So it's... Yeah, yeah. I hope people enjoyed it at home. I'm sure they will. If they don't enjoy that, they don't enjoy bodybuilding. Should do an American Pro Tour maybe with him one day. Mm -hmm. so him and one of the other guys maybe. I think we should Team go. To, we should go to like India or something. Put some pounds on these guys. Yeah, yeah. Can you yeah. imagine him in India? What? Putting on some pounds. If anyone's got the secret to being big, it's him. To get in big and putting on size properly, responsibly, and uh, you know, I think it's JP. It's JP. Absolutely fantastic. Big thank you there. Okay then. Um, we are. Wait, what? MD MD of course yeah <laughs> yeah big MD yeah Pop big media yeah yeah thank you to all those guys <laughs> high and tech we, and we out yeah and we out and that's it <laughs>